Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's. Tonight in Blacksburg, Virginia, in Lane Stadium, Georgia Tech taking on number 22 Virginia Tech in front of the 80th consecutive sellout crowd at Lane Stadium, one of the greatest and most intimidating venues in all of college football. And here comes one of the great entrances in the game. Touch that hokey stone and reach for excellence. And that is what Virginia Tech is doing tonight. The Hokies lead the ACC Coastal. They have a two game lead in the loss column on Georgia Tech. To put it simply, Georgia Tech is playing for its conference life tonight. A loss in this one eliminates any reasonable chance that Yellow Jackets would have of repeating as ACC champions. Glad to have you with us tonight. What a night it's going to be. Boy, well, here with 66,000 plus of your closest friends. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown's going to join us in just a little bit. Since the ACC went to divisional play in 2005, either Georgia Tech or Virginia Tech has represented the Coastal and played in the ACC championship game. It's created a little bit of a rivalry between the two, and combined, they've won the last three ACC titles. But, Craig, both teams have had to overcome embarrassing early season losses, and there's is a little bit of a testiness to these two. Yeah, it almost makes you wonder, why does anybody else even play in this division, right? <laughs> so far, so far. Very balanced division. But, you know, I get a, a feeling in watching Virginia Tech that they've caught their breath. You know, they, they lose to Boise State that everybody watched. They lose to James Madison, and they quietly put their team together. They have put, placed themselves in a position now where they have con control of their destiny. They can do whatever they want on the rest, rest of the way out, but they have to win. It's almost like Bud Foster told us yesterday. He said, our team needs to play with their hair on fire for 60 minutes, not 57 minutes, because that cost them against Boise State. Virginia Tech has had great play all season long from senior quarterback Tyrod Taylor. In four years, we've watched Tyrod Taylor grow up right in front of our eyes. He was platooning in a two-quarterback system in his first two years. He's had to play with young, inexperienced wide receivers. He's a great athlete that used to be a run-first quarterback. Now he's developed into a pocket passer that only runs when he has to. He's made great decisions this season throwing the football. The coaching staff cannot say enough good things about their senior leader, and here he is leading the team on the way to potentially an ACC championship. And as you see, both teams are meeting at midfield. This is part of an, initi an initiative from the ACC to show sportsmanship, not only in football, but across all of the sports in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now, Georgia Tech is the reigning champions of the ACC, but they're hoping that November will be something they can remember, Jesse, because they probably rather forget some things that have happened earlier. Georgia Tech has been a very inconsistent football team so far this year, and while they lead all offenses, averaging 317 rushing yards per game, they've made a lot of mistakes. They've had to shuffle the lineup on the offensive line a couple times this year. They've been very bad on third down. Quarterback Joshua Nesbitt is only completing 38% of his passes, and because of that, I would argue this has been the most one-dimensional offense we've seen under Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech. Well, you know, one-dimensional has what they've been, really. He's trying to create a better defense, so in the offseason, he hired Al Gro. Paul Johnson felt like Gro could come in here with a 3-4 defense, which is unique to college football. Not a lot of teams do that in the country, and can give them something they could go recruit to. Now, it's going to take time for Al Gro to get his system in place, to get his athletes in place, and as he said to me several times, Craig, sometimes you just have to say what the heck and go for it so in this game tonight against Tyrod Taylor Al Gro will gamble some hoping to win but it might burn them at times see how many times they get limited to that you know, Frank Beamer is hoping his team gets off to a great start he's with Jen Brown coach Georgia Tech comes in tonight's game as the number one rushing offense in the country how do you slow them down uh, you got to uh, be very disciplined take your assignment uh, be ready to adjust. They adjust. You got to adjust. But most of all, I think you got to get after them. 
It's going to be an aggressive football game. The winner of the last three matchups between your two teams have gone on to win the ACC championship. How important is tonight's game for a win in that title contention? Well, it's a great game here in ACC atmosphere, and uh, they're in our division, and that says it all. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Reese? All right, Jen, and it is a perfect November night for football in Blacksburg. If you like it a little chilly, it feels like football. It's about a 20% chance of rain. A little drizzle came down a little while ago. Temperature just over 40, might dip into the 30s before we're done here in Blacksburg tonight. The Hokies won the toss, but they deferred, and Georgia Tech will get the opportunity to get the football first. Georgia Tech last year won the game behind Josh Nesbitt, largely because they controlled the football in the second half with their triple option attack. Back deep to receive the kickoff for Georgia Tech will be B.J. Bostic. He's a freshman from Louisville, Georgia, and Embry Peoples, a junior from Orlando. Set to kick it away for the Hokies will be Justin Meyer. We're about set to go. Peoples driven into the end zone and he'll bring it out. Embry's got a seam and he's still on his feet. Embry Peoples across the 40 yard line and Tech will have great field position. Meyer was able to perhaps save a touchdown. Joshua Nesbitt opens up tonight. He's 42 yards short rushing. The ACC all-time leader among quarterbacks. In a win over Virginia Tech last year, Georgia Tech really struggled in the first half running the football. Paul Johnson made some adjustments, and Joshua Nesbitt totaled 122 rushing yards, three touchdowns, none bigger than this score late in the game that would ice it. There was a comment after the game, too, something to the effect that he took some pretty good shots during the celebration, maybe even tougher ones than he took in the game. The Hokies noticed. We'll leave it at that. Nesbitt struggled throwing this year, and he'll try to pass it on first down. And Nesbitt, who is completing just over 38%, is 0 for 1. It'll be second and 10. What about the impact players when the Jackets have it? Anthony Allen is playing the B-back position. He's going to line up right behind Joshua Nesbitt. He's been really good in his last two games, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Well, and out wide, Stephen Hill has to step up and make plays. Leads the team only 12 receptions. They don't throw it a whole lot. And if Virginia Tech is going to get off the field, it'll largely be the play of Bruce Taylor, inside linebacker. He leads the team, tackles for loss. We'll see if he can get in that Georgia Tech backfield and disrupt the option tonight. The pitch, big hole, and still on his feet is Owen Smith, cutting back to the middle of the field. And the sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama, is just short of the 30-yard line. Jaron Hosley making the tackle. Very important in this ball gate, the linebacker level, number 51, Bruce Taylor. They have got to get outside. Taylor in the inside pursuit never filled the alley. The most dangerous thing about the triple option is that the ball can be in three different places in an instant. You have to play great assignment football on defense. Option again. Anthony Allen, he's the B-back, a good carry inside the 25. Success on first down will help the Jackets on third down later if it comes to that. Well, and I'll tell you a number on that there that rings home for you, Reese, that the Jackets, if it's third and five or less, 51% they complete. If it's third and six or more, only 25%. And better still if you deal with a second and three. And a couple of early down successes for the Jackets so far. Allen's got it. He's stopped by Lindell Gibson, and here comes the first third down opportunity of the night for Georgia Tech. And you see the differentiation that Craig was just talking about, not only between the, the yardage that they had to go, but the disparity between last year and this year. Remember, this is a four down offense. This is an offense that they don't think about punting. If it's a manageable third down, they're thinking about going for it on fourth. Nesbitt's got the first down. He'll move just into the red zone. Stephen Friday on the stop. That play right there, I think they ran it one time against Clemson. I did their game against Clemson last time, and I thought that was a bread and butter play they needed to run more of in that game. This is an area of the field Georgia Tech has gotten better this year on offense. When they've been inside the red zone, they're scoring almost 91% of the time. A 
This red zone snaps the option. Allen has it now and rumbles down toward the 10. You know, Bud Foster told us yesterday the first thing you have to stop is the dive, and they've had good, good pickups on the dive early. Well, you know what? This Georgia Tech offensive line last week in their game against Clemson played against Naquan Powell, Bowers and those guys. They were beasts up there. Maybe the game slowed down a little bit tonight for them. This defensive line for Virginia Tech only averages 271 pounds, a lot lighter than Clemson. Again to the right. Allen has it again. Allen's got a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Yellow Jackets. Well, you also start thinking about the mindset of a defense. And, and they know the last time they were on the field in the second half against Georgia Tech, they could not find an answer for them. I think Georgia Tech really it will make an emphasis, like they do every week, but tonight to possess the football. Keep Tyrod Taylor and those weapons on the sideline. Has been on the option. Allen has it again, and he's down to the one-yard line. And on the subject of time of possession in that game in Atlanta last year, where Virginia Tech came in ranked fourth in the country, the Yellow Jackets held it over 38 minutes. Virginia Tech only had 19 offensive plays in the second half. That cannot repeat itself tonight. It is second down and goal as the Jackets try to get on the board with the opening drive. Nesbitt will sneak it. No signal yet. He appeared to get into the end zone. And he did. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. And the man who already owns the record for rushing touchdowns by an ACC quarterback has the 34th of his career. Joshua Nesbitt puts Tech up 6-0. Josh Nesbitt, one of the big things about him is the strength that he has. He's in there, he's stuck, and he doesn't give up his legs trying to get the point of the football to break the plane. Uh, the officials are going to send this upstairs to the replay booth. We're blocked by the official to see whether Nesbitt did indeed break the plane of the goal line before he went down. His elbow goes down there. It looks like here the ball's crossed the plane from that angle. His legs got, never touch the ground. He's got the ball in the right hand. See, there it goes down. I yeah. think that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Well, yeah. There's no indisputable video evidence to support otherwise. I would suggest there's indisputable video evidence to say it's a touchdown. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, what a great drive for Georgia Tech here coming on the road. One thing Paul Johnson had been telling us this week, and hey, this is our last stand. We have to win this game if we have any chance of repeating as ACC Coastal Division champions. And they get a great drive led by Joshua Nesbitt to score what looks like an apparent touchdown on the opening drive of the game. You, you see, take another look at Nesbitt on the sneak. You, you see, though, the center and the guard and the activity and the strength that they're showing on this opening drive up front for Georgia Tech. They just did not have that kind After of success. Review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. They didn't have that kind of success against Clemson at all during that game last week. So a nine play 58 yard drive eats up three minutes and 40 seconds and on to attempt the extra point will be Scott Blair who has made 66 in a row for Georgia Tech. Toe meets leather. The legendary voice of the Jackets Al Serraldo used to say and it's good. And Georgia Tech takes a 7-0 lead with its opening possession. We'll see Tyrod Taylor and the Hokie offense and see if they can answer Nesbitt's opening touchdown. 7-0 visitors in Blacksburg. Opening drive, 58 yards, and the Yellow Jackets take a 7-0 lead over Virginia Tech. Celebrating its sixth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating university general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick to date. All State has contributed more than $2.3 million in scholarship money. Nesbitt led his team down, but Foster's team unable to stop the option on defense, and we will soon see Tyrod Taylor in the Hokie offense. A couple of dangerous return men deep for Virginia Tech, David Wilson and Dyrell Roberts. Both have kickoff returns for touchdowns in their career. Roberts took one back last year against Alabama. I think Dyrell thought for a minute that he was in the end zone and now he's going to head for the other one. There's a block in the back. There's a flag down on the 10 yard line. Jeremiah at the two. 
freshman linebacker playing on special teams gets Roberts to the ground. Illegal block in the back. 98 of the receiving team. Ten yard penalty. It'll be half the distance to the goal. First down. Derek Hopkins is the one who is caught for the block in the back and the Hokies gave up an opening drive and now they'll start for less than advantageous field position for Tyrod Taylor the Hokie quarterback Tyrod Taylor is the winningest starting quarterback in school history he's been so good throwing the football this year fourth in the country in passing efficiency he is 95 yards of total offense short of the all time Virginia Tech record with that he would pass Brian Randall and get 94 of it on this play perhaps they're a long way back Darren Evans will have the first carry of the night. One of the three running backs we'll see tonight gets it across the five. Let's go with the impact players from the Hokies have it. Jared Boykin is a big physical receiver. He's a possession receiver for Tyrod Taylor, and Tyrod Taylor will go his way when he's isolated to the near side of the field tonight. Taylor's hoping he can go the way of the guys behind him, led by Darren Evans and those three backs, Wilson and Williams. We'll see them all tonight. And Gerard Tarrant of Georgia Tech, he has five career non-offensive touchdowns. That's more than any active player in the ACC. He's moved to safety and has a nose for the ball. See what he can do against Taylor. He'll throw it for the first time tonight, and it's complete to Cole. Danny Cole makes his 16th grab of the season. It'll be a first down for the Hokies. Dating back to the spring, really, of Taylor's freshman year, watching him in practice and hearing Beamer talk about him, the precision of knowing where to go with the football and getting it there immediately. You're exactly right, Craig. Just does a nice job working through his progression. The fullback's the first read in the flat. It's not there. You work right to Danny Cole, first down. With a 15-yard pickup, Tyrod now needs 80 yards for that Virginia Tech mark total offense. Evans slamming his way across the 25. One thing Virginia Tech wants to do tonight is run the football. Since 1999, Virginia Tech is 106 and 10 when they outrush their opponents. They're only 10 and 25 when they are outrushed. That's bad news tonight because you don't expect this team to outrush Georgia Tech. Well, and it's bad news too if you're depending on Georgia Tech's rush defense. They're giving up 162 a game on the ground. It's a young defense, and Al Groves going to get them there, but they will give up some big plays. They want to limit them though. Three different backs have had career highs against that defense this season. Again on the ground, Evans has it again. Short gain, it'll bring up the first third down of the night for the Hokies. It's Dominique Reese and Brad Jefferson made the stop. Remember back in 08 when Evans hit the scene and what he did, he was the 08 sensation and broke the records here before Ryan Williams came along, broke his freshman record. Craig, you and I were here. We watched him set a school record, 253 rushing yards against Maryland on a Thursday night. It was unbelievable. Oh. He had 1,265 yards that year. was the MVP of the Orange Bowl. And then blew a knee in preseason practice last year and opened the door for Ryan Williams. Taylor on third down. It's complete for a first down. Big Andre Smith gets up close to the 45. All right, you want to watch now Isaiah Johnson, number one. He's kind of over in the middle. You're going to see the drop that goes into the left side towards the receiver, the left side of the offensive line. Watch number one. He doesn't quite get to the throwing lane. That's just youth. Tyrod Taylor understanding there's an unblocked player running at him. He's got a hot throw. It's his tight end. Again, Tyrod Taylor showing you he's dialed into the offense. That's an added weapon, an added dimension now for the Hokies. Tyrod on play action. Wanted to take a shot, and he threads it in to Jarrett Boykin, and Boykin uses those giant hands, three xl size gloves to snatch it out of the air. You talk about hand strength and high pointing of football. This ball right here is being driven on by safety Mario Edwards, but the six foot two receiver goes up high points and just the hand strength. Oh, a lot of people break that pass up. You, you know, now the, the play before where I was talking about the true freshman Isaiah Johnson not going to the path of the ball where it's going to be. That times. They're going to look and see if that first foot got down before the second toe hit the out of bounds marker to see if the completion will stand. But Al Groh's defense and him teaching them, Edwards went to the passing lane. It just was a better play by the receiver, but 
And I tell you what, you got to have strong hands and focus. Might be a little foot. Ooh, simultaneous know. feet down. They may be down on the white chalk. Yeah, it, you know, it, it almost looks as if maybe his right leg is the first one to touch. You see how that foot goes down mm -hmm. right there? Yeah. And yeah. If that's the case, then that's definitely a catch. Yeah. Or sorry, the left foot. Left I'm sorry. Foot, yeah. The left foot looks like it's the first one down. Okay, let's see the left foot, the one on the back. Hey, he's, yeah, the left I foot think, I think touches yeah. first. I think that's a, that's a catch. Yeah. Inbounds. It's amazing, you know. Jared Boykin has 3x receiver gloves. But he's got such thick fingers that they bust the seams in the gloves, and he has to get a new pair almost every week. I don't care how thick or long or whatever they are. It's how strong they are. That's what is unbelievable is the strength to go up and get that football and bring it down. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. <laughs> so Boykin, who is the Hokies' leading receiver, has his first grab of the night, his 32nd of the year. Got over 500 yards receiving, and Tyrod Taylor is razor sharp out of the gate. Evans still at running back. We've yet to see Ryan Williams or David Wilson tonight. Evans gets inside the 40. One thing Georgia Tech really tried to work on during their bye week was learning how to fit properly in the run game. They have a lot of players that don't necessarily understand how to get after the ball carrier, which ear hole to attack on an opposing blocker to try to set up those walls and the force to cut those creases down for running backs. Second down. Evans has it again. Darren pushing forward, but he's greeted by a swarm of yellow jackets, and it'll be third down for the Hokies. This offense has been able to have success over the stretch that they're in right now because the offensive line has gotten better. We talk about the receivers, the quarterback, the running backs, all that, but the, the up, up front success has been a lot better. In three of the last four games, this offensive line has graded out over 80%. And that's a win here at Virginia Tech. They've played so much better as a unit here in recent weeks. Third and a short four facing Tyrod Taylor. Well, pressure coming. This is where Taylor's dangerous. And he gets rid of it, and Boykin this time can't make the catch, and it'll be fourth down. Mario Butler was on the coverage. Al Groh, we saw right there, a dialed up, different deal. On third down, Al Groh will get creative. He's got that NFL background to him. He's smart. He's going to throw different looks at the quarterback and try to confuse him. Remember, he was a head coach at Virginia for nine years, so he has a lot of familiarity having played Virginia Tech all of those nine years against offensive coordinator Brian Steinsberg. You know, Steinspring yesterday was saying third down is Al's baby. He <laughs> wanted to stay out of that third and long. Georgia Tech defense. It's a nice play on third down. And the Hokies will punt it away, and it will go into the end zone off the foot of Brian Saunders. And Georgia Tech will have it for the second time tonight. Hokies had all kinds of problems with that option offense the first time. We'll see if they can stop the Jackets when you come back. Here at Virginia Polytechnic Institute, Great research institutions, Georgia Tech on top of Virginia Tech, 7-0. And one of the great things that Virginia Tech has produced over the years, tremendous defensive players and none greater than Bruce Smith, dominant player for the Hokies in the early 80s and, of course, went on to an illustrious professional career as well. He's here to watch the alma mater play tonight. Allen has it on the option. There's a flag in the backfield. Illegal shift against the offense. Five yards to previous spot, still first down. You're seeing Joshua Nesbitt really take his time at the line of scrimmage because he's letting the defensive pre-snap read dictate which direction they're going to go with the offense. But that kind of play right there is what drives Paul Johnson crazy. The little things before the snap or during the execution, he says, we're beating ourselves. You know, they're, they're little things. It's been the frustration for the Yellow Jacket boss who says he thought his offense would be a little, you know, a little farther along. Penalties, missed assignments, wrong paths on the option. 
all befuddling the Jackets. The quick toss. Turning the corner is Jones, and Roddy Jones gets up across the 25-yard line. He'll be about four and a half yards short of the first down. All right, here's what Nesbitt's seeing over on the left side. One, two, one, two, three. That's called three on two, right? And you've got the angle on that middle linebacker. That's a winner. you got a receiver coming back from the outside to block inside. That's a numbers game. That's Orwin Smith getting that block on the perimeter. In order for this offense to be successful, they have to have great blocking downfield by the wide receivers. Allen has it on the inside. Louisville transfer. Plows up close to the first down. I think he's going to be just a tad short. In this game tonight, Virginia Tech is going to try to have their defensive tackles take care of those dive plays. I think they think they're strong enough at the point of attack to be able to win blocks and make plays against Anthony Allen. Yeah, but you and I have watched a lot of film on this over the, over the years. Georgia so, Tech, it, it's not just control it. Yeah. It usually has to mean they have to push back. They yeah. have to push them back and make the quarterback bow his route in the backfield. I don't know if they can do that. <laughs> Get some help from Bruce Smith if it doesn't work soon. Third down. Nesbitt converts, and Josh is in the open field. Joshua Nesbitt, he should be gone. <laughs> and is. Hey, I saw Hosley closing. I saw him closing. <laughs> and with that... There is a new all-time leader in rushing among quarterbacks in the ACC. It is Joshua Nesbitt, and just like that, the Jackets are up 13-0. <laughs> well, in the last two games <laughs> against this defense, he has 273 yards rushing and four touchdowns, and he does have enough speed once he gets in the open. It just shows that you have to be dialed in as a defense. If one player misses an assignment, it's a home run. Well, you never want to say he's gone in and have him walk down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. I can't wait to hear that on replay. Yeah, I imagine it's probably going across the uh, the internet as we speak. <laughs> Honesty at its best. You bet. I, well, hey, look, he should have been gone, and he was. <laughs> Nesbitt with his second touchdown run of the night. 14 nothing. Yellow Jackets. 71. The Yellow Jackets have rolled in here. They're up 14 nil. Perfect execution by Georgia Tech offensively. You're going to see true freshman Kyle Fuller get in the way. That's B back Anthony Allen able to get the sealed block, and that opens the lane up for quarterback Joshua Nesbitt. Following Paul Johnson back to his days at Navy, I believe this is one of the most productive calls that he has in his offense where the quarterback fakes it to the inside and he follows the guy up in there, and it's a great play. I didn't see it a lot against Clemson. Tonight we've seen it now successful twice. Bud Foster trying to straighten out those defensive assignments as the Hokies will get the ball for the second time tonight. It's Dyrell Roberts on the return. Roberts will get out to the 23. Saturday night football continues. Arizona taking on Stanford. Nick Foles supposed to return for the Wildcats and scheduled to against Andrew Luck and the Cardinal. You know, you look at the Cardinal, obviously, people have talked about them. Look what Arizona has in front of them. They've got Stanford. Three weeks later, they have Oregon, both road games. You win those. You've got to put them in the national title discussion at least, depending on what happens with them. Well, with Oregon, they would beat them. Missouri and Texas Tech, some will see. 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 on the West Coast. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Ryan Williams has checked in at running back tonight, and Tyrod Taylor going to have to use the timeout before the play clock expires on him. So things not going well in the early moments for the Hokies. Virginia Tech down by 14. The Virginia Tech alumni. Russ Taylor just had to burn a timeout before the play clock expires. Yeah, we're sitting up here and we're trying to figure out what did he see or didn't see down there. It was a basic 3-4 pre-snap alignment. But it shows you again, like you mentioned earlier, you don't see the 3-4 defense a lot. And for Tyrod Taylor and for these offensive linemen, they're going to see a lot of different fronts that they have to figure out quickly to get the play called on time. Taylor started to run. Instead throws it to Boykin. Boykin is second catch of the night. He's up close to the 45-yard line where he's pushed out by former Virginia Tech player Mario Edwards who transferred to Georgia Tech and now is in his third season as a Yellow Jacket. 
Tyrod Taylor has over 2,000 yards career-wise rushing the ball. But what I like about him, Jesse, is the fact that his legs set up the defense. It forced them to come up respecting the run. As a freshman or a sophomore, Tyrod Taylor may have just taken off and run this football. But here he is showing you his progression, his evolution, looking downfield for wide open receivers. Taylor showing a little option. This is Josh Oglesby, and Oglesby, who used to be a tailback, and has moved to the fullback position, gets it into Ramblin' Wreck territory. Yeah, you know what? For this offense and this team to get on track, their star guy, Tyrod Taylor, has to get it going. And, and you see what he's doing this year, 15 to 3. Very impressive. He's thrown 10 touchdown passes this season since throwing his last interception. You want to talk about a guy that's on fire. That's Tyrod Taylor right now. He needs to, he needs to stoke the fire right now. Yeah. Uh, four receivers at the bottom of your screen. Ryan Williams behind them. So trying to find a way to get to 34 quickly. They are. There goes Ryan Williams, who's had a hamstring problem that's kept him out much of the season. He gets down to the 40-yard line and moves the chains. Great blocking out front by the receivers, Cole and Roberts. Bye week came at a really good time for Ryan Williams. The coaching staff said he had a lot more juice in his step, a little bit of burst in practice. Tyrod just getting the football out quickly to his playmaker. He's able to make use of downfield blocking. A little bit of that speed coming back, right? Again, that's a tailback getting the football. That is nothing more than a toss sweep with three receivers out front blocking for you. So Darren Evans in the first series. Williams getting this one. Play action. Taylor's got an alley in good speed. Tyron will get inside the 35 and down to the 33. It'll be second and about three. Georgia Tech defensive coordinator Al Groh compared Tyrod Taylor to Randall Cunningham this week and with his ability to make things happen with his legs. <laughs> Al, Al gave you some credit for being a lot younger than he than you are, too. Yeah, he he told goes, me. Now look, Jesse, I know that, hey, Craig, you'll understand this, you and Reese. But Jesse, old, now, guys. Hey, old guy named Randall Cunningham, even Reese, you'll. <laughs> even Reese would remember Randall Cunningham. <laughs> Here's Williams, first down. Williams still on his feet. You know, when he lowers his head, his running back idol is Walter Payton. That's why he wears number 34. He's got a little sweetness tattoo. But he, he even lowers that shoulder and head the way Watch. Payton did. Let's see if anybody's able to get to his legs. Like see that. how the shoulder pads deflect the body and the defender from his legs? And that gets you two more yards, if not a completely broken tackle. So key to have Ryan Williams back in the lineup. You see the tattoo here, little sweetness, 34, someone he idolized growing up as a kid. Last year, set an ACC record with 22 total touchdowns as a freshman. And over 1,600 yards. And he has it again. Williams inside the 20 and down to the 15. He'll be very close to a first down. We haven't even mentioned the third back in this rotation, David Wilson. They got a lot of good ones. And with Williams hot, watch the patience. The block up front, there's another block. He sets his blocks up going down the field, vision. Offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring told us they wanted to get him going in the second drive of the game, try to get him involved, and you can see why. He brings a different pace to this offense. Williams again. Not much this time. Now I can tell you as a former runner that, that you don't have your legs back completely while well, he's been messing with that hamstring. So, you know, I know, hey, two or three, get him out of there, get a fresh back in there, and let somebody else go. And right on cue, Craig, David Wilson coming into the game. He's been on the kickoff return team. We haven't seen David on offense. As fast as all three of these guys are, Wilson is the burner among the three running backs, an explosive player they can use in a variety of ways, and he's in the backfield with Taylor now. Second and eight. Taylor going to run it. Tyrod down inside the five-yard line. 
the red zone is the best area of the field for a quarterback to run. When the defense is playing big zone coverages, linebackers are dropping out in the second level. You see these guys all get out in the linebackers, and he's able to make a play downfield. He's got a block by David Wilson. It almost looked like David Wilson kind of got downfield a little bit, maybe made a block, a little, you know, really got on him early. That's that green dog, you know, the linebacker came up in coverage on him. Wilson just kind of ran into it. He thought he was rushing. He wasn't rushing. He was covering it. First and goal for the Hokies. Williams. He'll pick up about one, and when the second quarter starts, Virginia Tech will be trying to pay off the drive and cut Georgia Tech's lead in half. A very productive opening 15 minutes for the Ramblin' Wreck. They're on top by two touchdowns. Back here in Blacksburg, Georgia Tech, a couple of first quarter touchdowns, take a 14-0 lead, but Virginia Tech is threatening. They have a second and goal on the Yellow Jacket four, trying to cut the lead in half in front of the 80th consecutive sellout crowd in Blacksburg. Ryan Williams has it. Williams to the corner. Touchdown, Hokies. Ryan Williams, who had 21 rushing touchdowns last year as a freshman, just his fifth because of that troublesome hamstring, but he was huge on that drive. It's Virginia Tech, an extra point away from cutting the Yellow Jacket lead in half. Officials hold up the proceedings for a moment. Everything's in place. And now Chris Hazley can attempt the extra point. Hazley boots it through, and Virginia Tech's offense is alive. And right back in at 10 plays, 77 yards. Ryan Williams finishing it off with his 28th career touchdown in this, his 18th game. And hold on, everybody. We might have a shootout in the ACC again. Darren Evans has played very well recently, but now it's a one-two punch again with Ryan Williams apparently healthy and scoring the touchdown, Craig. All right, out of the timeout, Virginia Tech immediately ran to the line of scrimmage, tied into the left, only three defenders to the left. Georgia Tech was late getting matched up. He used the quick count. We saw the cornerback Mario Butler come screaming down the line of scrimmage. Wide receiver Danny Cole able to shield him off inside. That made it an easy touchdown run for Ryan Williams. Georgia Tech, which has not been stopped tonight. Two possessions, two touchdowns in the first quarter. We'll get it for the first time here in the second quarter. Henry Peoples and B.J. Bostic. Back to return the kickoff from the Hokies. It'll be Bostic. Well, B.J. had a little alley to get across the 25-yard line as we check in with John Saunders. Well, Reese and ESPN right now brought to you by Miller High Life. Former Mississippi State quarterback John Vaughn says a former teammate of his allegedly sought payments in the range of $200,000 to secure Cam Newton's signature on a national letter of intent. Apparently, that former teammate is Kenny Rogers, who said it would take some cash to land Newton. More at halftime. Back to you, Reese. All right, John, an extensive story on that on ESPN.com right now. But you can check out as Anthony Allen gets it on the dive on the option and gets across the 30-yard line. That's one of those potential distractions that Gene Chizik's going to have to deal with at Auburn. You know what? Talk to him, the team about it. Say, hey, fellas, there's nothing to this until it has been checked out thoroughly. And even then, there's nothing you can do about it. So focus on your responsibilities and play your game. And the Auburn Athletic Department did issue a statement simply saying that Newton's eligible to play, and that's all they were saying right now. Allen is stuffed with virtually nothing. First to hit him was Antoine Hopkins. Antoine Hopkins has a younger brother, Derek Hopkins, who's a true freshman that lines up right beside him. The older brother Antoine's nickname is Hop. His younger brother Derek's nickname is Skip. 
And they actually have a little baby brother whose nickname is Jump. Jump. <laughs> Who they all say, by the way, is uh, Derek's not in there right now. Is John Gray's 91 beside him? And as always, they always say the younger brother. He's going to be better than all of them. On third down, Allen has it, and Allen gets close to the first down. Now, for most coaches, this is a no-brainer, punt it away situation. Paul Johnson is not most guys, not with this offense, and not with his philosophy on fourth down. He better be like most guys, though. When you got a 14 to 7 lead, wow. This is what Virginia Tech defensively knew they were getting into. Now, now's the time. You want a big momentum change? Put your cleat in the grass. Let's go. You saw the stat 16 to 25 on fourth down. He's trying to draw them off sides. Johnson likes to gamble, but with the lead right now, you don't want to turn the momentum. Not a way to be a regular guy, a normal guy. <laughs> He may surprise you a little bit later on. You never know. It could be. 15, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech here. Fourth and one. Paul Johnson called the timeout after trying to draw them off sides. Doesn't look as if he's going to be a regular guy, Craig. He's no. going to go for it from just across his own 35. Oh. And he, now he's going to have to punt it because he's got a right tackle that moved. I believe that was Austin Barrick who. Ball start. 73 in the offense. I think the first thing here, Virginia Tech's D-line is trying to bait Nesbitt to call a play right over the right guard, but that quick motion shift obviously causes the false start. If they were going to run, I believe it would have been that quarterback draw that goes right in there behind Allen, the B-back leading the way that has been very successful. Right? That's why Virginia Tech was shifting to the right side of the offensive line. Sean Poole, who doubles as an infielder on the Tech baseball team, punts it away. Aaron Hosley makes the fair catch at his 35. Now for tonight's weekend menu, brought to you by Applebee's. Several games involving ranked teams, most notably the one in Salt Lake City where college game day will be. How about that TCU team behind the quarterback play of Andy Dalton that won 22 straight regular season games. Meanwhile, Utah's won 21 straight at Bryce Eccles Stadium. Something has to give. Alabama and LSU teams trying to stay atop the heap among one loss teams. Same with Arizona and Stanford. Great Saturday of college football coming up the first Saturday in November. Tyrod Taylor has it back. Tyrod's going to run with it. And Tyrod is now the all time leader in total offense at Virginia Tech, passing Brian Randall with that 11 yard run, and he moves the chains in the process. Well, one thing's for certain as you look as the quarterback sees the secondary, four are rushing, you've got one in the middle, and everybody's covered up down in the secondary. This no. offense is so much more unpredictable with Tyrod Taylor now as a senior. A couple years ago, this offense runs the ball on first down. They run it on second down to set up play action on third down. Here they are lining up in shotgun, spreading the field, trying to throw for it on first. A total 8,039. There'll be a lot more where that came from before this season's over. A quick completion to Jarrett Boykin. Going to pick up nine on first down. And to your point, Jesse, about the way the offense looks different, you know, Al Groh was talking about this, as you mentioned earlier, he spent a number of years as a head coach of Virginia, very familiar with what Brian Steinspring does, but he even said this looks nothing like uh, what Virginia Tech used to do back, back when he first started at Virginia. And when he first started against Tyrod Taylor, Taylor wasn't as efficient a quarterback throwing the football. Do you see how good a pass that was that led the receiver up the field to get those yards? Very natural. Wilson. Wilson still on his feet. He's going to be given forward progress. It'll be a first down at the 43 yard line. Julian Burnett and Gerard Tarrant on the stop. But, but you know, one thing now that Al Groh will have to account for is that Tyrod Taylor running the ball. You saw those seven dropping into coverage. So he's over scratching his head right now, right? Jesse's thinking, okay, first down, what if he throws the ball? He's been telling his defensive linemen all week, keep Tyrod Taylor in the pocket. And you're right, Craig, those linebackers now have to start putting an eye in the backfield because they need to go pursue the football if Tyrod Taylor takes off. Pick up the pressure. 
Oglesby has the catch. He'll be marked out of bounds. Just about the 36 yard line. No, it, this is a, a work in progress defensively for Georgia Tech. They're running a brand new scheme, a 3 4 defense. They may not necessarily have the right players playing the specific positions in order for this defense to be as effective as it is. They probably have to go out and recruit some different guys to fit the defense. Especially the outside linebackers. They have to be behemoths. They have to get to the quarterback, and the defensive ends have got to be 290, 300 pounds and dominate. Wilson. Dominating on that play is Anthony Abunaway to transfer from Tulsa, who's moved into a starting linebacker position. But we asked head coach Paul Johnson why the change on defense. You guys won an ACC championship last year. What's the point? And he said, you know, I wanted to get better on that side of the football. I wanted to get a system like we have on offense that we could recruit to. We could play the same defense week in, week out. This is a direction he wanted to go. And he gets a guy in Al Grove who used to be ACC head coach of the year twice. So you get all that added experience. I think it was a great hire. Taylor's emptied the backfield. He needs three. Pressure coming. He got rid of it and found his tight end, Andre Smith, for the first down. Julian Burnett was all over Taylor, and Taylor's a little slow getting up. All right, Julian Burnett is the fourth guy who will come on this rush. So it's coming from a different angle. And he's smarter than the Virginia Tech offensive line. But he's not as good as Tyrod Taylor. Greg Nozal, the left guard, was late trying to get to Burnett. They say Tyrod Taylor is a monster in the weight room, very strong. You see the strength able to keep on his feet to deliver that football been a monster throwing it. He's hit eight of his first nine. First and ten for the Hokies. Wilson. Explosive speed. Wilson into the secondary. He'll get down to the ten. It'll be another first down for the Hokies. Okay. Did you see that ignition? Did number four Wilson take off? 15, off? 15 plays of 20 or more, and I mean he gets through that hole in a second. He's been clocked at 4.29 in the 40-yard dash, and center Bo Warren did a nice job climbing up to the second level to get a hat on a linebacker. Wilson's got it again. He would be knocked down. And speaking of getting to the second level, that's something that Wilson did sort of famously or infamously here on campus at Virginia Tech. One night he's walking by the basketball arena, Castle Coliseum, and there are some cement arches that lead to the roof, and the incline is ridiculously steep close to the bottom. And Wilson decided he'd just see if he could run to the top. <laughs> and, and he did. And there is, although we have there is Castle Coliseum, and those arches sent him up there. Well, it wasn't smart to do it, nor smart to tell about it. <laughs> no, he's got he's got phone video evidence that he did it. He didn't think anyone would believe it. Here's Taylor on second down. Tyrod throwing to the end zone. It's incomplete. He was looking for Danny Cole. It'll bring up third down. You know, I think he was looking for immediately is his tight end, Andre Smith. Four of Smith's 11 receptions now have gone for touchdowns. A favorite target for Tyrod Taylor, that big athletic tight end in the red zone. We saw last week NC State quarterback Russell Wilson do a lot of damage running the football in the red zone. You've already seen Tyrod Taylor do it in the first quarter. This defense has to be accountable for him. And Georgia Tech going Charge to use a timeout. That's their second charge timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Media timeout. Any kind of timeout you can think of. <laughs> Just about 30 seconds away from a third and goal play. We'll see if Beamer and the Hokies can tie it up. All of those faces Michael Vick, Percy Harvin, Bruce Smith. From the 757 area code, you better have a direct line in there if you're in this part of the country recruiting. Look at some of the great stars in the NFL and previously in college football who came from that area. One of them from Hampton is Tyrod Taylor on a third and goal. Tyrod all the time in the world. Directing a little traffic. Not enough room to run it in. He's got it. Oh, he's picked off in the end zone. Intercepted by Rod Sweeting. And that was not a wise decision by Sweeting to bring it out. But it does stop the Virginia Tech drive. 
Paul Johnson will take it though, whether it's at the 6, 10, or 15, but he got a turnover from his defense. Algro's defense kept looking for jerseys crossing in the back of the end zone. Jesse, he couldn't run because they had a spy on Taylor. I was really curious to see if Georgia Tech was going to try to bring pressure to Tyrod Taylor so that he could not run against the soft zone. Instead, they just dropped eight bodies and they do a nice job working laterally, keeping their eyes on Taylor. It was a bad decision trying to force the football in the baseline of the end zone. He throws it behind his intended receiver, Marcus Davis. Turnovers in the end zone are killers. A golden scoring opportunity goes awry for the Hokies, and the Jackets have it back. Nesbitt, he doesn't know the pressure's coming. Now he does. Joshua gets away and throws it away. Wendell Gibson was trying to sneak up on Nesbitt. I'm going to go back to that last interception now. Al Groh made a decision to spy and to drop, right? And Brad Jefferson, number 51, just stayed 15 yards in front of Taylor and would not. And Taylor could see him. He could feel him. So Al Groh made the adjustment, put somebody on Taylor where he couldn't run the football in the end zone. Second down and 10. And Tech again jumps the gun. Yet another false start penalty and another one of those mistakes that's been driving Paul Johnson nuts. False start gets the offense. Number five. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. You know, a lot of the Georgia Tech players talked about how their freshmen and sophomores were very wide-eyed in a loss at Clemson two weeks ago. They're a little worried how they would do tonight. Lane Stadium here at Virginia Tech easily the loudest stadium in the ACC. And as Bud Foster told us, play with your hair on fire for 60 minutes. He needs his defense to play with their hair on fire the next two minutes for field position to get the ball back to his offense. Quarterback draw. Nesbitt, who went 71 for a touchdown, lowers his shoulder and gets some breathing room before Davon Morgan stops him. Just short of the 15-yard line. It's the second time tonight we've seen a designed run by Josh Nesbitt to get the ball downfield. You see here, Davon Morgan looks like that right shoulder, which he hit Joshua Nesbitt with. Yeah, it's hurting him a little bit right now. Joshua Nesbitt is a strong, powerful guy at 220 near Ooh. pounds. Ooh. And yeah, yes, Morgan just takes it all on that right shoulder. One thing head coach Paul Johnson always says about his quarterback is he's really tough can break a lot of tackles does not go down easily as you see here Will Jackson Will Jackson the field. Yeah. freshman guard from Knoxville Tennessee and you know this has become a testy rivalry you you can expect some licks being passed and we've seen it so far tonight so a testy freshman comes in at left guard yep. Jay Finch to replace a testy freshman James Hopper freshman also went on defense in place of Morgan who left the game Third down. Nesbitt sacked. Bruce Taylor got him. Total collapse of the left side of the offensive line. Jay Finch, watch the back step on the left side of the old line. 50, he backs up and just, it's just caved in. Nothing there. Left tackle completely whiffs on Chris Dreger, the left end. You see number 33. He was able to get his hands up, and that forced Joshua Nesbitt to have to pull the football down. And the Yellow Jackets punted away. Jaron Hosley, eighth in the nation in punt returns. And he has a touchdown on a return this year. Hosley put it on the ground. A flag flies in. Is Tech saying that they got it? Julian Burnett was down in the middle of it. Georgia Tech does have it. The flag flew in at the last minute. We'll have the referee Tom Zamorski sort it all out, but Burnett knocked it away, and Isaiah Johnson recovered it for Georgia Tech. And I think Johnson Johnson's going to be happy with the result of the play. Number 11, the receiving team. The penalties decline. First down. 
So two turnovers in a five play span for Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech out of the hole and in Virginia Tech territory. Beamer ball not working tonight for Virginia Tech. The opening kickoff return by Georgia Tech to midfield gave them great field position as which they went in to score. You have a defense with an interception for Georgia Tech and now this. They don't have the change so they got the change going in the wrong direction on the far side as Anthony oh, Allen gets down across the 45. It was really hard for Virginia Tech to try to get prepared to play this triple option style of offense. They said their scout team was giving good looks, but they didn't get great speed from the scout team looks. They had to bring tight ends in to play tackle and try to try to isolate, try to get that close to look as possible for defensive coordinator Bud Foster. Now the change is set across the way. We'll know exactly how far they have to go. Allen into the secondary. Anthony on his feet. Anthony Allen inside the 10 yard line and Georgia Tech's knocking on the door again. 33 yards on the pickup. All right, let's watch how this perfection works. Watch the right guard block down. Watch how it caves and it gives them the line of scrimmage to where he can run. Fullback gets in there. It all started with the right guard. Boom. And that fullback inside tonight three times now nice run you see the tackle able to get up to the second level get a block on that middle linebacker Virginia Tech needs an answer for that dive play. First and goal have to go the full 10 quick pitch Roddy Jones he'll lose one. Jesse made the comment about how Virginia Tech tried to work with speed in practice. I did the Maryland Navy game early in the season. And against that option, Maryland's coaching staff, they didn't play, use a football in practice for their scout team that week. They said they were going to run without a ball because they could they could play faster, trying to simulate the speed of the option offenses. I think the biggest misconception of this triple option is that there's no big plays because you don't throw the ball deep downfield. You don't get big plays. We've seen a lot on the ground tonight from Georgia Tech. Nesbitt. Knocked down at about the seven yard line by Davon Morgan. And the one thing that Georgia Tech was able to do last year when they had Bebe Thomas, who was a first round draft pick and wide receiver, they did get some plays down the field. And that's one thing that's been missing from the Georgia Tech offense so far this season. They're completing only 38% of their passes. If that ends that way this season, that will be the worst total we've seen in the football bowl subdivision since 2000. How about the number coming into this game? Seven of 39 completions. <laughs> We're for a touchdown. Third and goal. Fake that toss. Nesbitt going to throw it. He is intercepted. Davon Morgan. And now Nesbitt is down as he was trying to make the tackle as. Both veteran quarterbacks, both seniors, have thrown interceptions in or near the end zone, and Nesbitt is still not up. And this could be very troublesome for the Yellow Jackets. We see Joshua Nesbitt here get to the outside. There's some pressure from Chris Drager, the defensive end. He wants Anthony Allen in the flat, forces the throw. It was covered. That ball should have been thrown away. Davon Morgan doing a great job jumping in front of it and there is a sudden change situation. OK now the last time we saw Davon Morgan and Nesbitt meeting Morgan went out of the game. He came back in the game this time Nesbitt's on the ground. Height on the outside as well as running the ball Jesse. They got him split up outside catching the football. They've got him involved running the football in conventional fashion with the fullback in front of him. He looks pretty good. They think he's only 80%. Well, Joshua, yeah, no, it's not Joshua Nesbitt, the star quarterback for Georgia Tech, is headed back to the locker room with four minutes remaining in the first half. His backup is Tevin Washington, a sophomore from Wetumpka, Alabama, that hasn't played much. Tyrod Taylor tries to scramble out, and he goes down in the arms of T.J. Barnes and Jason Peters. That can't be good news for Georgia Tech when you consider what Joshua Nesbitt has meant to this offense, a perfect fit for Paul Johnson playing the quarterback position without their leader in a game they have to win if they have any hope of repeating as ACC champ. Unlike a traditional passing running offense though when you do lose your quarterback the one that's behind him can he come in and execute the option offense they don't throw the ball they have no success throwing it so it's now all about the running game. 
Darren Evans back in the backfield for the Hokies. He has it and gets across the 35. Uh, Jen Brown's with us. Jen, what do you have on Joshua Nesbitt? Well, the trainers told me that it is his right arm, as we saw, that when he went to go make that tackle, he stretched out his arm and hurt, hurt it. So they're going to take him back, reevaluate him, see if he's going to be able to return. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, Jim, we'll, we'll keep an eye on Nesbitt and see if he stays in the locker room for the remainder of the half, which is now inside three minutes to go. Washington, who is awaiting his first opportunity, has passed for just four yards on the season. He's run for 49 on 12 carries, a far cry from the experience that Nesbitt brings. Taylor's pass is complete to Darren Evans. Evans has a first down across the 40 yard line. It's a nice job there of Tyron Taylor staying calm. Georgia Tech showed an all out blitz look, bailed back out of it. Tyron Taylor didn't force anything, didn't freak out and run away. Just threw his check down, able to move the chains. Oh, it goes back to just the whole the maturation of Tyron Taylor. And the guy that now makes good decisions at the line of scrimmage, Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, has total confidence in his management of the game. Taylor has an alley to run, but he wants to stay behind the line of scrimmage, and Tyrod waited too long. Jason Peters got him from behind. Well, Saturday afternoon, LaMichael James and the Ducks host Washington, who will be without Jake Locker as the Ducks try to maintain their position as the new number one team in the BCS standings. And Joe Paterno goes for win number 400 as the Nittany Lions host Northwestern. College football presented by K Jewelers. It's on ABC or ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern time. Some of you will see Nebraska, Iowa State, North Carolina, and Florida State. You can check out, you can find your game on ESPN.com. Just search maps. Pressure coming. Here's a hold on the right side. No flag as of yet. Taylor scrambles out and this time does just throw it into the sideline. But Warren probably fortunate that he didn't get nabbed for, for grabbing the absolute protect defender. But you know what? Now that, okay, the previous play, Jesse, we'd seen that Al Gro's defense showed it, backed out of it. That time they showed it and they brought it. And it's really changing the looks. In the head of Tyrod Taylor. It's the chess match going on between Al Gro and Brian Steinspring, trying to keep Tyrod Taylor in this offensive line off balance. And Craig, I think you and I would both argue they've done a very good job of that tonight. Yeah, I agree. Steinspring does not look pleased by what he sees going on beneath him. Third and ten. They'll dump it to Boykin. Boykin will not get close to the first down. Excellent coverage by the Yellow Jackets. Isaiah Johnson was there. That is a huge stop for this Georgia Tech defense. Able to stop the bleeding, so to speak, considering the momentum shift after the interception by Joshua Nesbitt deep down into Virginia Tech territory. And when you really think back, step back and look at this deal, this is an offense. Virginia Tech in their last four games averaging 483 total offense, 40 points a game, and here they are with seven going in at half. Great job by Al Gros defense. Not to rain on the parade, but those games were against Wake Forest, Duke, Central Michigan. The only ranked four team games. was NC State. Four games. Yeah. You like how he's following my lead of raining on the parade? <laughs> I never let the facts get in the way of a good graphic. <laughs> Gerard Tarrant. Tarrant, a dangerous punt return man, but the Hokies have him covered up there to make the tackle is Alonzo Tweedy as we check in with John Saunders. You see Dr. Lou get some big air as opposed to big air time. Tech's going to keep it on the ground and with Tevin Washington in a quarterback after Joshua Nesbitt returned to the locker room being injured after the interception. Paul Johnson might be happy to let this clock run out. Although I'd say this I'd like to get another snap in case Washington has to do something get one more snap under your belt in case you got to play the second half. Well you also don't want to risk him turning around faking the wrong way or, or getting a, a, a missed handoff the balls on the ground. It's a guy that hasn't played that much in real game time yet here he is on the road hostile environment go in take the lead get him prepped for the second half oh boy one snap under his belt i'd sure like to do something else you think you think jesse's old enough to remember joe pisar chicken trying to give it to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, herm edwards picked that thing up and went and scored <laughs> thank you <Reese. laughs> thank you <laughs> Just very, my kids. very even in terms of yardage, Virginia Tech <laughs> has controlled in time of possession. Jen Brown's with Frank Beamer. 
Coach, you move the ball well, but and you finish with the one drive there. Uh, you've got you know only seven points here on offense. What do you need to do in the second half? Well, we need to take advantage of the opportunities. You got to take, you know, every time you get a chance, you need to take advantage or at least get three points on the board through the interception. But we came back and got one too. But uh, you know, it's going to be a second half ball game. They, they they had a couple of early drives there that led to the two touchdowns. What do you need out of your defense? Well, you know, I think we adjusted a little bit there and and got them thinking a little bit too. You know. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a cat and mouse game right now. All right, Coach. Thanks so much, Reese. All right, Jen. Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. Since the ACC went to divisional play, one of them has made the ACC title game. The Jackets have a 14-7 lead. Joshua Nesbitt going 71. Will we see him in the second half? Jackets up by seven as we check in with John Son. Georgia Tech on top of Virginia Tech, 14-7, about set to start the third quarter here in Blacksburg. Reese Davis, Craig James, and Jesse Palmer with you, but perhaps the story of the second half, the status of Georgia Tech quarterback Joshua Nesbitt. We'll check in with Jen Brown right now. Jen, what do you have? Thanks, Reese. So well, unfortunately, it is not good. Joshua Nesbitt has a right forearm injury. He will not be returning to tonight's game. I talked to Paul Johnson and asked him what he said to his team at the half about him not returning. He said he didn't say anything. His backup, Kevin uh, Washington, is ready to go. That is why he came here to play football. He did not come to be a backup and we'll see him get his chance here tonight in the second half. All right, Jen, and that is the play on which Nesbitt was hurt. He threw an interception in the end zone. Potentially a game changing play for a number of reasons. As you see, Tevin Washington, the sophomore from Wetumpka, regarded as a very fine runner, as you would expect most option quarterbacks to be. Just about set to start the second half. Nesbitt, not only a terrific player, but he's the leader. What impact do you think it's going to have on the Jackets in the second half? I think your defense has to step up. You yeah. have to be mindful, too, of where you are in this football game. You've got a lead, you know, and your defense has played outstanding. Now the defense has to step up with special teams. Head coach Paul Johnson is known as being one of the best in the country at making adjustments during the course of a game. What kind of adjustments can he now make on offense without its leader out on the field? Washington has thrown only three passes this season, completed one of them. He's run for only 49 yards. He's have one touchdown run, but he's only... Got 12 carries, and he's going to be thrown into the fire here in the second half. But the Hokies will get it first, and we're underway in the third quarter from Blacksburg. And David Wilson have the opportunity to catch it. Instead, wisely lets it go out of bounds. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Virginia Tech offensively has to find a way to block some of these exotic pressures that Al Groh has been dialing up from his 3-4 defense. Too many times, white jerseys have been running free at Tyrod Taylor. All right, this was an interception. I, I would recommend Tyrod Taylor take off. You're better one-on-one -on -one in open space than most linebackers in the country. Taylor has to take control of this game with his legs to open up that Al Groh defense. Taylor will get his first shot from his own 40 yard line after the second half kickoff went out of bounds. Ryan Williams starting the second half at running back for the Hokies. Taylor complete to his tight end and another catch for big Andre Smith, the senior from Germantown, Maryland. Becoming a favorite target here of Tyrod Taylor. Good hands. Really good on third down and in the in the red zone for touchdown. But again, another first down pass play called by offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring. Not trying to be predictable tonight. There is Gro. Al Gro who is matching wits with that man, Steinspring, who said that Taylor's improvement was the elixir he needed to allow him to sleep at night. Tyrod has been a great face for this program over his four, yard, four years here. And Ryan Williams will nose the ball across the 50 and get the first down and get Virginia Tech into Georgia Tech territory. There's Tyrod Taylor making a call at the line of scrimmage with his back, knowing the down and distance and calling a play to get the first down. It shows you why this coaching staff has so much confidence in their senior quarterback. He can go out and manage a game by himself. He understands the schemes. Taylor making adjustments. Williams cuts it back. Williams almost ran through an arm tackle, but got just enough cloth to get him down. Gerard Tarrant was on the tackle along with Ijon Cross. 
All right, so here's the cat and mouse game now. Tyrod Taylor sitting in the backfield. He's waiting on those safeties to walk up. When the safety number eight walks up and stays back, but stays back far enough to run the football, it's a play that he designs. He runs the call there. How about the open field tackle by Gerard Tarrant there? He played cornerback the last two years. They moved him to safety to take advantage of his ball skills and his ability to find the football, but he's not afraid to get physical. And it shows you his ability to run up and make a play. On second down. Taylor again, plenty of time. He's going to take a shot. He had Roberts out there. He couldn't hook up with Dyrell, third and eight. Jesse, Tyrod Taylor's a good passer, but when you drop eight into coverage, Reese, that's opening up in college football the ability for a running quarterback to take off and go down and hurt a defense. You're thinking you should be more aggressive with his feet. I do. At least leave yourself third and two or three instead of third and eight. Yeah. Taylor just missed the home run ball. Roberts here to have his man beat. That right overshot him by just a bit. Now he'll need eight. Keep the drive alive. Screen to Williams. He's hitting the backfield. And an excellent play by Dominique Reese, who's made a pair of them here in the opening drive of the third quarter. I'm watching the freshman, Jesse. How about you? Number 45, Jeremiah Adaochu. Yeah. Did you see him? He was starting to rush, and he read screen and got back out there and took away the cutback. It's a new defense. We keep talking about this 3-4 scheme. These guys don't have a lot of experience in it, but you can't deny the athleticism on this Georgia Tech side. That's how you protect a quarterback who's out of the game. Come out in the second half and open up like that. Brian Saunders. Punts it away. Gerard Tarrant. Makes the fair catch from inside his 15. We'll see Kevin Washington momentarily. We're going to see more from the NASCAR guys. Only three races remaining to decide the Sprint Cup Championship. Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick locked in the closest battle in chase history. This driver's going to be able to separate themselves. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues in Texas Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage starts with NASCAR Countdown at 2. Telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. And here is Kevin Washington. He'll have to go in the second half to Georgia Tech. Washington gives it off to Anthony Allen. You know, it's really interesting. Craig, you had mentioned it in the first half. You know, Tevin Washington now in the game without the game reps. They're not going to ask him to throw and win this game, but he still has to make the right decisions at the line of scrimmage, pre-snap, directing which way the play goes. He's got to make the right handoff reads. He's got to earn the respect of Virginia Tech's defense at some point by pulling the ball and doing something with his legs. The pitch is a little behind him. An excellent catch by Roddy Jones. Jones up close to midfield. He'll be stopped just short of midfield by Anton Exum and Rock Carmichael. Now that's how you can gain the respect quickly of Virginia Tech and Bud Foster. Ball has got to come out really quick. They force the issue, pitches there. You know, I'm sitting there watching Lindell Gibson, middle linebacker. He had a chance to tackle the quarterback. Did you see him? He just kind of broke down right in front of him. How many times do you and I watch game film oh. all this and you see people against the option just get stuck in no man's yeah, land? They, they freeze yeah. up. That was the fourth run of 20 or more yards tonight. Tech leads the nation in that category, but this time Orwin Smith, who had one of those 20-plus yard runs earlier, has stopped just short of the 50. You know, I think one of the stresses that this option offense puts on defense is the fact that playing defense, you can't play too fast. You have to see where the ball is. If you play too fast, you risk running right by the football, and that time, you just saw the linebacker, he wasn't playing fast enough. But danged if you do, danged if you don't. If you get caught watching too much, yeah. you get flat-footed, right? Yeah. Washington left it with Anthony Allen, who gets it just into Virginia Tech territory as we go down to the sidelines and Jen Brown. Guys, the bad news don't end, doesn't end with Nesbitt. Georgia Tech's offensive lineman, Will Jackson, who we saw go out there in the second quarter. He has not returned. He is questionable. He's injured both of his shoulders, and as you can see, he, they've got a freshman, Jay Finch, in right now backing him up. So we'll see if he returns later in the game. See Jackson, big freshman, trying to loosen those shoulders up. And that's something that Paul Johnson talked to us about. A lot of the offensive linemen that they've recruited are freshmen and sophomores. They've got a lot of young guys up front. He's building that front wall for the future. Washington 
Left it with Anthony Allen on the option, and now it's going to be fourth down. And with Joshua Nesbitt, I think the, I think this is where Paul Johnson would go for. Let's see what he does with Tevin Washington. Well, Craig, you and I were watching that last handoff. It almost looked like Tevin Washington wanted to keep the football late. I thought the football maybe came out on the ground. That's what we're talking about. The timing might not be there now with the backup quarterback and all these handoff meshes. And here we are, monster fourth down. Georgia Tech, a seven-point lead, fourth and two. This is their M.O., this is what they do, and Allen has the first down and move the chains. Well, Jesse, to your point, that, that mesh doesn't look quite the same right now. <laughs> well, there's no meshing or thinking or anything on this here. He's giving it to the fullback, and that is power football up the middle. And how about that? Jay Finch on the left guard, the center doing his job, Sean Brett Bedford. You know, this is a this offensive line came to play tonight. The right guard Omaregi Uzi did a great job with power off the line of scrimmage. The majority of their damage has come up the middle of the field. Uh, the flag's going to be looks like Allen leaned forward from his B back position as Paul Johnson calls the fullback. Illegal motion, number 18, with the offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. And this is something Paul Johnson wanted to clean up during the bye week. He said, you know, we're not going to install more offense. Let's just try to get good at something. That's their third shift procedure penalty in this football game. That's five yards. That's starting first and 15 three different times. Just to, and with a quarterback in there who has no experience. Washington, who is known as an explosive runner, did not get away from John Graves, the carrier of the Virginia Tech lunch pail, makes the tackle. There was another example there. You see the footwork by Washington. It looked like he almost stumbled, maybe got stepped on. It's all those little intricacies that are so important to the timing of an option offense. It slows it all down. And you know, when he does that drop step, that might work in practice, and he didn't get called out on it because he's only doing a few snaps in a game. You got to go. Washington will be hit in the backfield and stopped immediately. James Gale, the freshman, making the play. And you know, at some point, Paul Johnson, he has to understand, too, field position, where he is with the clock, how his defense is playing. Almost lost the ball there. Well, and there's a guy, James Gale, who just played the dive and the quarterback. He made the quarterback keep the football and then ran and tackled him. If you're a quarterback, you have to attack him. To make him pay. He cannot take two players like that. It's a great play by Gale. But Washington's got to make a decision. Give it to the dive or keep it yourself. A little shot on that lunch pail. The Hokie defense, that's their, their symbol. They need to go to work here as flags fly again. Ball start. 77 offense. Oh, this and look, we've got a little skirmish going on inside the 45 and coaches from Virginia Tech coming out on the field Orwin Smith and Kyle Fuller appeared to be in the middle of it ball start 77 offense five yard penalty still third down you know what you show the lunch pail out here and all of a sudden everybody gets a little feisty going for the bucket top left there you just oh, come on you can't do that I understand but then you can't throw the punch either yeah well, I'm not sure, you know, you can't get inside their heads, but Orwin Smith, I'm not sure he knew the play was over. He was blocking low downfield is something that Georgia Tech does, and it infuriates opponents sometimes. And, and one of the things that the ACC did was try to make sure that those A-backs, those guys who line up on the wings, square up against guys when they're going to block them low downfield. Fuller didn't like it much, no matter how he did it. Washington uncorks one out there. Stephen Hill, and he can't hold on to it. Fuller, who was just involved in the little fracas, was on the coverage. There is an example why this offense misses Demarius Thomas. Stephen Hill is six foot five, runs right by the corner. This actually is not a bad throw from Washington. He has to be able to go up and high point this football. This is what Bebe Thomas was able to do for the past two years. And I thought it was a good call. Throw the ball deep. You either catch it, you get a pass interference, or there's an interception and you've got him tagged deep back in there. So 
this is this just missing in here. And I know Stephen Hill, you know, he's their leading receiver and he only has 12 receptions, but but this is a guy they cannot afford to lose. They need him to step up and make those plays. You know, Paul, Paul Johnson, as you see Stephen Hill in trouble getting moving from that spot just off the sideline. You know, Paul Johnson told us that he felt like Hill had some drops early in the season, lost a little bit of confidence. This guy, he, he's a superior athlete. He's an excellent long jumper on the track team. He just had problems securing the football. Well, people have told Paul Johnson, hey, you're never going to get another guy like Demarius Thomas, the first receiver taken in this past year's NFL draft. And Paul Johnson tells them, hey, man, there's a lot of programs around the country that have never had a guy like Demarius <laughs> Thomas. Not easy to replace. Hey, think about this with Demarius Thomas uh, last year, Craig. He had 46 catches, just 46. Over the 11. 100 yards. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's the first pick at the wide receiver court, and he played in an option <laughs> offense. That probably says more about his skill than any other stat you could bring up. Virginia Tech wanted to come after that punt. Hosley has put one on the ground tonight, did not take the fair catch, and he is greeted rudely by Isaiah Johnson, the freshman. So Virginia Tech and Tyrod Taylor down by a touchdown. They'll have it deep in their own end when you come back. Heading into the weekend, time to take a look at the BCS standings. Brought to you by Vizio. Oregon moving into the top spot. Auburn slipped from one to two. Just the fourth team in the BCS era. That's since 1998. The drop from the top spot, despite not losing, doesn't really matter as long as Oregon and Auburn win and stay there. They'll meet for the national championship but an entire month of football to go before then in TCU Utah this weekend. People remember what you do in November. LSU and Alabama. What a better way could you think of to start the month. Kick it off. Baton Rouge getting after it. The guy in the stands looks like Sean White who was talking to Dr. Lou at halftime. Tyrod Taylor. Now he's going to pull it down the way you want him to, Craig. And there he takes a big hit as he gets out to about the 18-yard line. You have to do that. Now, this is a guy who's won 81% of his games underneath Frank Beamer. That's the winningest coach under Beamer. That's saying a ton right there. This is a great athlete, a superior athlete, who can get it done with his legs and give them second and short. They have to make this defense respect him. And he has the ability, like you mentioned, Craig, to take games over. He did it last year in a monster win late in the fourth quarter against Nebraska here at home. It's a game a lot of people kind of point to and say that was the turning point for Tyrod Taylor in his career here at Virginia Tech. They measure to see if Tyrod was able to pick up the first down. You know the, the play in the first half in which Tyrod threw the interception in the end zone was not dissimilar from the game winning touchdown pass against Nebraska. He had all kinds of time. He got away from Indomitian Sue a couple times and threw a touchdown pass. This time was not able to. He threw the interception that thwarted a hokey scoring drive in the first half or a potential scoring drive. You know, many I don't like sometimes numbers, you know, I look at and I like them, but the last year he led the country in in yards per attempt. Attempt yeah. at 9.5. Yeah. Now that says a lot and he's high again this year. You know what that tells me? A, he's completing a lot of passes, and B <laughs> The passes he is completing are far downfield. The yards per attempt, if you if you look at the passing efficiency statistics, that's a big factor in those. That's why Tyrod Taylor, one of the reasons anyway, he ranks fourth in the nation coming in. Aaron Evans runs into Big Brad Jefferson. You know, Tyrod Taylor was a big-time leader this past offseason. Not only did he set up all the seven-on-seven -seven drills with his wide receivers, he made sure the defense was out each and every day. So they were getting coverage looks. They could work on the appropriate timing with the receivers, and it's really shown up this year. Beamer said coming into the season, one of the things he liked the most was having a guy like Taylor. The optimism, the outlook was really high because of Tyrod's performances. Taylor going to run it out of there again. Rob will stumble his way and pick up what he can. At about the 26, maybe the 27-yard line. Saturday night football continues. Nick Foles expected back for Arizona. But, boy, Matt Scott's done a great job on Foles. has been out. Arizona and Stanford, a couple of one-loss teams in the Pac-10. Missouri and Texas Tech, some of you will see. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 on the West Coast. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Second down and two. 
Woo. Big time hit. Ijon Cross, a sophomore from Flowery Branch, Georgia, makes the big stick. It'll bring up a third down. This guy was the ACC Defensive Player of the Week back in September. You see the athletic ability to take on a big offensive lineman, see the guy and make the tackle. He's the prototype defensive end in a 3 4 scheme. Over 290 pounds. He's got the strength to manhandle a tackle all by himself, and he shows you it right there. They need to recruit more guys like that, and his defense will get way better here in the years to come. Headed down toward four and a half minutes to go in the third. Taylor gets rid of it just in time, and just a spectacular defensive play by Mario Butler to knock it away, and Virginia Tech will have to punt. What a play Al, by Butler. Al Grove continues to dial up different looks. You see the pressure that comes on the inside. It's hugging up, man across. There's no, they wanted to rub right there, Jesse, in the middle, didn't they? And this time he used safety Gerard Tarrant as the spy on Tyrod Taylor. So not only is he mixing up the pressures, he's mixing up the coverages, and he's mixing up which guys are keeping their eye on the mobile quarterback Taylor. I still want to see if any one of those spies, though, can handle Taylor one-on-one -on -one in space. Gerard Tarrant, aforementioned Mr. Tarrant, now spying on the punt, hoping to get a return. <laughs> Tarrant catches it, and he is snowed under by a host of Hokies. No Joshua Nesbitt. Here's Tevin Washington. He'll try to get the Yellow Jacket offense going when you come back. A little R&R &R for our great Thursday night crew that went bowling last night. You saw Trigger, TJ, and Kevin, and then Michael Allen, our news producer, who was going for three strikes in a row, didn't get that, but he did have the high score. And there's Michael. He had a 191. But here's, here's the question. You see Trigger up top. The question for Michael, the 191, was that more or less in his career receiving yards in Chip Kelly's offense at New Hampshire? Are uh, you taking the over or under, CJ? <laughs> I'm, I'm going under. The, I'm saying that's the, I'm going to give Michael a little love. I think that's the under. He had more than 191. <laughs> oh, man, great crew. A lot of fun. The best. Absolute best. Devin <laughs> Allen picks up six yards. I can't believe TJ didn't get that split. I mean, come on. <laughs> Easy, easy for us to say sitting up here, right? Nowhere near those bowling lanes. Georgia Tech without Joshua Nesbitt would like to find some running lanes in this Hokie defense. They were and did while Nesbitt was in there, and Anthony Allen does on consecutive carries and moves the chains. Georgia Tech able to get chunks of yardage on first down. Heading into this game, they were averaging six yards per carry on first down. That puts them in position to move those chains. Number 50, Jay Finch, filling in for Will Jackson, just had a great block right there, doing his job. You never know when you're going to be called on to perform in a high level in a football game. Congratulations for, for uh, Finch being ready to get in there and do it. And again, not great timing, not a great mesh point on the exchange as Allen and Tevin Washington ran together. Georgia Tech leads the nation in rushing this year, 317.4 yards per game. They're second worst in passing. But you see, and this now the third year of the Paul Johnson era, they have been dominant running football. It's the second best rushing team as of today that they've had in school history since 1975. This offense has run the ball better, they've thrown fewer interceptions, and they've gotten better in the red zone this year. And again, Washington had the ball out there, and there was no be back coming. Richard Watson, who just checked into the game, be back. And, uh, Tevin's having a little problem with the timing right now. Hey, you know what? It, but it's understandable. Exactly. Yeah. In this offense, it takes forever. He's waiting on the be back to get there. The ball's out there. He's trying to read and see what's going on. Everything's off just a little bit. But th the game speeds up. It's in practice. But you know, I I'm seeing that there's there's motion adjustments they're having to make. They haven't been crisp, shifting with motions. It's not a very well-oiled machine tonight as we've been watching this unfold. Third down. And Watson, who is giving Anthony Allen a bit of a rest. Very short game. Observation. To his left, Washington looks a lot smoother. Things look better to the left for him. Fourth down and two with the redshirt sophomore quarterback. Johnson's going to go ahead and go for it again. I think... The better Paul Johnson understands his defense is playing, the more apt he is to start going for more of these fourth downs. 
He's not shy in just about any circumstance, but here, the Hokies could get very good field position if they could come up with a stop. This time they're going right, and the Hokies do get a stop. Okay, I'm going to bring up the counterpoint. Their, their defense is playing well. Why not play a little field position as you see him get stopped on fourth down? Absolutely. Punt the football, play field position. That time, Bruce Taylor doing a great job coming off, getting to the ball carrier, knowing exactly where they were trying to run with it. Got there and made a play. Not late. Bad call on the big baby. <laughs> Any call against the big baby to you is bad. <laughs> David Wilson staying on his feet and getting close to midfield. Julian Burnett. Julian Burnett has been covering some serious ground for Al Groves defense. If you're going against David Wilson, he is showing the explosiveness that the coaches were so high on him about. And I'm telling you, every time he touches the ball, it looks like he may take it the distance. He can do 10 backflips in a row. I mean, it's the freakish athletic ability we've been talking about all night. And he's their third running back. Second down and five. Tyrod. Tech has everything blanketed in the secondary, so Tyrod's going to get what he can. He was stretching the ball toward the first down marker. And they're going to mark him just a little bit short. Should be third down at about one. That was the exact same play that Tyrod Taylor threw his very first completion on in the game. Now I'll grow mixing up the coverage, giving a different look. Nobody open on that one. But rather than throwing it away, he used his legs to get him third and one. That's my point. Do something with those feet. Make pressure. Put it on him. Eventually, you'll tire out those linebackers chasing you all over. Third and one, Wilson. Wilson made a really nice cut to be able to pick up the first down. And Jesse, you were talking about the freakish athleticism of one David Wilson. Here's some videotape evidence of those backflips. This was during media day Three. a few years back. Jesse, let me ask you a question. I can tell you, I did not. Did you ever do backflips at the media day or anything? Oh, no. I, I, I probably wasn't even really at, I don't know if I was allowed to be at media day. This guy could not join us on our workouts. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys do this week? Tyrod Taylor throws. Marcus Davis was over there, and they're waving it off and saying it skipped before it got to him. So a big game potentially negated by the short hop pass. 14-7, Georgia Tech has a lead on Virginia Tech. Headed to the fourth quarter. Craig and Jesse headed for their workout. What will the boys do here in Blacksburg besides fall out? <laughs>put one foot or both feet right into the end zone for just the second time tonight as Virginia Tech trails Georgia Tech 14-7 as we head to the final 15 minutes of play. Georgia Tech has not completed a pass tonight. That's not unusual. They do have the worst completion percentage in the country. They're over four. The nation's top rushing team has run for 270 yards. Two first quarter touchdowns still standing up. But the Hokies in Yellow Jacket territory as we start the fourth quarter. Option, Taylor. Tyrod Taylor inside the 40-yard line. You know, that right there was patience before the snap by Taylor. Let's the defense show their hand to exactly, Jesse, where the blitz was coming from. Well, he had the confidence to keep the triple option on into the blitz, and that was all Tyrod Taylor. That play should have been stopped five yards behind the line of scrimmage. That just shows you his athleticism, his ability to make positive things happen with his legs. But again, this defense tonight, Al Gross defense, have given up only two plays more than 15 yards. They keep it in front of them. Taylor needs three. Got a problem in the backfield. Tyron lets it go wide open in the end zone is David Wilson and he can't haul it in. That's the second time tonight that Tyrod Taylor has been able to buy time, run around, allow wide receivers to get into the scramble drill. He had a guy open and this ball just barely overthrown. What a great job of Mario Edwards, number eight, a transfer from Virginia Tech to get back there in the vision against a running back who's not used to a long ball like that 
excellent effort. So we just saw Georgia Tech get stuffed on a fourth down conversion attempt. Now Virginia Tech. They're trying to keep the drive alive. Taylor. Fires complete to Boykin first down. When you got to have a play and it's on the line, you go to your best receiver, 101 career receptions coming in, on time, all time guy for Virginia Tech on pace to break the records. He's going to make the play for you on a critical fourth down. This team has got a lot of character. After two devastating losses in the first week of the season, they were able to bounce back, rip six wins off in a row. What kind of character do they have now in the fourth quarter? Crucial game at home. Taylor to throw again. He wants a lot, and Marcus Davis, after getting tangled up with Mario Butler, Davis had it. Hit him in the arm and bounced away. And there is a flag after the contact between the defensive back and Davis. Pass interference. Number two of the defense. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. I think Paul Johnson thought that should have been offensive pass interference, but Brian Steinspring had the perfect play on. Jared Boykin running the post down the middle of the field is able to occupy the safety, and that sets up the 6'4 Davis on the outside in the post row. You know what? I, I thought that the defender did go through, Butler did go through the legs of the receiver. At first, I thought it might have been incidental contact, but not. It is pass interference. I, I'm not so sure that Mario didn't stumble and, and sort of fall as he was trying to keep up with Davis on the cut. I think the call was the right one. First and ten from the 15. Wilson. David Wilson to the end zone. Touchdown. So the decision to go for it on fourth down. Gives Virginia Tech a shorter field. They convert their fourth down opportunity, and if the extra point is good, they'll tie it at 14. Well, you saw some of those big time wheels that Wilson has. Gerard Tarrant thought he had an angle. Tarrant, Tarrant can run. Not many can keep up with Wilson, and on that play, no one did. It's good, and with 13 21 to go in Blacksburg, ACC Coastal Battle. Virginia Tech has a two game lead on Georgia Tech in the standings. Yellow Jackets have to win to stay alive, and the Hokies have just pulled even. It's 14 on. Virginia Tech's offensive line, watch the tight end block down. You got your guard and your tackle that pull, and for a guy who runs a 4 2 9 40, who has a 50-foot triple jump to his record. He's going to explode. It doesn't take much to hold the block. How about the backup left tackle, Nick Beckham getting downfield, getting a part of Tarrant. This is a very deep offensive line. That's one of the reasons they played better through the stretch. They have a lot of depth to keep guys fresh. Now young Tevin Washington, who is in for Joshua Nesbitt, who was injured in the first half. See if he can get the lead back for Georgia Tech. B.J. Bostic returning the kickoff. Oh, Bostic had an alley and he was tripped up as we go back to the studio and check in with John Saunders. Reese, time now for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. Roy Hallou Jr. of Nebraska, 307 yards rushing against Missouri. First 300-yard game in Nebraska history, breaking the previous school record of 294 and three rushing touchdowns of 50 yards or more. Text the word vote to 345-345 for your chance to win a trip to the national championship game. And John, what a performance that was by Alou and really the entire Nebraska team, but particularly Alou, the quick pitch to Roddy Jones. And Jones met by a bunch of angry Hokies. Leading the way is Kyle Fuller, the freshman. Now you're starting to see a Virginia Tech defense that feels a freshman quarterback, an inexperienced quarterback out there. And they're going to play a lot faster. You know, I, I like Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator's decision to get true freshman Kyle Fuller on the field. He's a cornerback, but he does great in open field tackling, can play nickel, and that's why he's on the field a lot tonight. 
saw just a moment ago in the graphic on the productivity is another flag flies in the backfield. The productivity of the yellow jacket offense is. Ball start. 52 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. He's taken a dip since Joshua Nesbitt left the game. Bruce Smith approving of the defensive effort in recent plays by Virginia Tech. Once again, a yellow jacket shaking up on the field. It's Will Jackson again who had the shoulder problems earlier. So yeah, if you can't lift your helmet on the sidelines uh, with your shoulder, you probably, and it's courage, but you're probably not going to be able to get that shoulder back in time to get back with enough range of motion to be effective. And this is Jay Finch, another freshman, has checked in in his stead at left guard. Reese, I think that was the fourth one of those procedure calls in this game. That's been penalized seven times on the night. Washington to throw it. Washington sacked. Stephen Friday finishing up his Thursday in pretty strong fashion. Stephen Friday is the best pass rusher on this Hokie defensive line. Four sacks heading into the night. He's just going to beat the right tackle around the edge. Austin Barrick. You'll see Bruce Smith, something he was used to on the sideline right there, the hands up. I've had a chance to see and play against that guy up close and personal. I did too. He always beat me like that. <laughs> Third down and forever. Anthony Allen, who's had over 100 yard rushing tonight, will be way short of the first down. And now Georgia Tech will have to punt it away, and Virginia Tech's going to get back in good field position. You think back to the previous series when Georgia Tech went for it, when they had the lead. They gave the ball back, did not convert on fourth down. It gave Tyrod Taylor and that offense great field position. They took advantage of it. Now this crowd is in the game. You have a young quarterback who's Who's struggling and now it's going to be a heavy burden on the Georgia Tech defense to try to keep Virginia Tech from scoring a low line drive punt to Jaron Hosley. Hosley got room. Flags are flying everywhere. Hosley's still on his feet. He's tackled inside the 30 yard line. We have two flags down on the return. See the look on Frank Beamer's face. I think you know what's going to happen to this punt return. Head coach Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech referred to his punt team and the punt game as god awful. <laughs> Paul doesn't mince words sometimes. <laughs> there are two fouls on the play. Holding against number nine, the receiving team is declined. Holding against number 17 of the receiving team will be enforced with a spot of the foul, 10 yards, first down. It's Kyle Fuller, the freshman, and the reason Paul Johnson had those words for his punt team, they're 113th in the nation in net punting. Yeah, special teams just have not been kind to Virginia Tech tonight, and, and that's a unit that the head ball coach is coaching up right now. James, not so much. <laughs> What's the deal with you writing up on the board, right? Two well, inches. You're you're taller than I am. I, I, listen, I didn't want to embarrass you. I, I saw you strike out on that last jump. Where you, well, you, I, you I, fanned I, and missed it. I just fanned it. I never jump anyway. I never jump on anything, <laughs> unless my wife tells me to. <laughs> Darren Evans is back into the game. Ed Evans turns the corner, gets up. Close to the first down, he'll be a yard, maybe two short. That was, that was fun, though. You know, doing the, the the idea there with that ball and everything. We had those, we had those, um, those, uh, uh, what are they called? Bungees yeah, around cables. our hips. And, you know, you're supposed to jump, and it's and it's and it's resistance, right? Yeah. And uh, I could I could feel that. I, I tell you where I'm sore. I'm sore my hip flexors from jumping. Now, you never jump like that. That room we were working out in is designed solely for agility, speed, and vertical, of which we're limited <laughs> in all three. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor on second down. Tyrod's going to throw it away. His strength coach, Mike Gentry, his son, Bo, is a backup center on the Virginia Tech football team. Another look at Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, you know, he's trying to buy all the time he can, but he gets. Yeah, he's trying <laughs> to give it a little bit back. Body strength. Yeah. yeah. Just misses. Peters. You know, I'll say one thing Georgia Tech has done well on defense this year has been in the fourth quarter. 
their three conference wins heading into the game. They've given up only 10 combined points. They've already given up seven tonight. They have to play with their back to the wall right now. Okie's 4 of 10 on third down. Evans picks up another one, now 5 of 11 as he gets into Georgia Tech territory. Mario Edwards, the former Hokie, makes the stop. You know, and they have limited up until this third quarter, early fourth, the big plays. They've got to stay focused the entire time. That's one thing that Al Grove is concerned about is he's got some young guys back there, but they don't play every snap. Headed toward 10 minutes to go. Taylor, pressure coming from behind. Taylor buying and throwing and almost picked off by Edwards, who is the closest person to the pass. It'll be second down and 10. You clearly see the strategy of Al Grove on multiple passing situations. Defensive line, just hold your guy, hold your position, and don't rush the quarterback. But this, is, this is a part of the game, and Craig, you and I have talked about it all night, where Tyrod Taylor really has to take over now. Being a senior, understanding it's fourth quarter, you got the ball in the enemy territory, tie football game. If you can go move a couple of chains with your legs on this drive, that is so big for your football team. Tyrod's hit just five of his last 14 now for 20 yards. Tech's done a great job in coverage. You haven't seen Taylor hit that fifth step or so and let go of the football much tonight. A little half roll, throws it back into traffic and a tremendous grab by Danny Cole. Cole was just covered up by Tarrant, but he made the grab anyway. It'll be a first down for the Hokies. It's a great play call by offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring to move the pocket, get Tyrod Taylor away from that pass rush of Georgia Tech. And bought a little time for his receivers to find the opening there. And Cole, a guy that has lots of confidence in himself, started slow in the season, had some drops, but stayed the course and has come back a big catch for his team. Danny Cole's father is the head strength and conditioning coach at Virginia Military Institute, showing you those strong hands right there. Evans. Evan showing some strength in getting inside the 30 yard line. You know, every, a lot of people know the story about Darren Evans, his, his freshman year, over 1,200 yards, and then he gets a, a torn ACL in fall camp last season. He forced a miss last year. Everybody had expected him to be back full speed when he came back to camp this year, August 10th, but it's really taken him about half of a season to find his legs. He, he's really back to 100%. Now I'm impressed with what he's doing the way he looks considering this downtime. I mean, it, of course competition will do that for you. Two other guys pushing you. Evan has it again and Darren gets inside the 25. Evans it was Evans early in the season who had a very costly fumble in that loss against James Madison. It was uh, Hokies were trying to salvage the game late and he put the ball on the ground. Jamie recovered it. The officials are calling the timeout, and James Madison went on to the stunning upset here in Lane Stadium. And, and, and a lot of those fumbles, Reese, you see that effort right there going through a lot of traffic when you're fighting for those extra yards and only one hand on the ball in traffic. You do you do have a chance of losing it. We always talk about running backs by committee and, and how different backs bring a different element to the offense. Ryan Williams is kind of a slasher. David Wilson, the home run threat. Darren Evans broke a running back bench press record at the school this past year. He now benches 405 pounds. So he's the guy that can go get those tough yards. Oh, well, but he still doesn't have bragging rights in the running back meeting because that would be Josh Oglesby, who has a 420 pound front squat, 316 power cleans. They got some strong dudes oh. here. It's because I keep doing those jumping things we were doing. <laughs> Whatever those things are called. When they see the weight room is open, they jump in. <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Evans is in a tailback. 14 all in the fourth quarter. Hokies on the move, and Darren has it again. Evans inside the 10, rumbling inside the five. It'll be first and goal for the Hokies. This is where the offensive line really appreciates a running back stay in the course. Evans stays play side. He doesn't try to cut back. Didn't have it there, but he knew it where the hole was supposed to open up, and Kenny Younger, his fullback, cleared the way. The one thing about a 3-4 defense, there are bubbles over the guards. And Craig, I know you've told me numerous times, as a tailback, you love running into those bubbles with a lead fullback blocker.
First and goal for Virginia Tech. Evans. Evans. Set up and knocked out of bounds. He'll be stopped short of the goal line. Mario Edwards was first to hit it. It's just a fist fight when you get down to it. It's a total street fist fight of Will trying to keep someone out. And Edwards did a heck of a job of holding up the fullback, fighting wow, his how, ground, didn't how, he? How about that? That I was mean, a great play. I mean, that's, wow. that's, a, uh, that's a block that is supposed to be won by a 250-pound fullback. Woo. Good job. And generally is as wow. Kenny Younger, an excellent blocker. Evans will run. Behind that line again, and Georgia Tech rises to the challenge, and it'll be third and goal. Jason Peters, Gerard Tarrant. Can you get the feeling watching this defense right now that they understand what this football game means? What it would mean for three points instead of seven oh. with a quarterback who has no experience? Far greater chance that you can get down the field at least for a chance at a field goal than a touchdown. This, you could argue, is the most important down in the football game today. Third down and goal. Taylor to the end zone. Touchdown. Andre Smith. so difficult to stop on the goal line very similar to the play we saw that NC State ran against Florida State last week it turned out to be the winning touchdown and the one Florida State wanted to run and had and had until they fumbled in the backfield it would have won the game for the Seminoles as it is this one gives Virginia Tech its first lead of the night the extra point is up and good and now the Hokies unbeaten in the ACC a two game lead in the loss column on the reigning ACC champion Yellow Jackets now have a seven point lead trying to put Georgia Tech away for the night. Lead of the night. Touchdown pass is a great example of tight end Andre Smith being on the same page as his quarterback. Smith's going to get a clean release and he's going to see the flow of this defense working to the right, chasing Tyrod Taylor. He just hooks up inside away from the defense. Easy completion and easy score. And Al Groh knew this was a favorite target of Tyrod Taylor's in the red zone. Now five of the tight end's receptions, Smith's receptions, have been for touchdowns out of 15. I mean, they were not fooled or surprised by who was going to get it. So now Georgia Tech, which hasn't scored since its first two drives of the game. No Joshua Nesbitt, Tevin Washington will try to lead them from the 20 as we check in with John Saunders. All right, John, the Yellow Jackets with two yards in the fourth quarter and you see the way their offense is falling off. Nobody's completed a pass for the Jackets tonight but the running game has taken a hit since Joshua Nesbitt left the game late in the first half. Tevin Washington to throw going up top. He's got a wide open receiver first completion of the night is Tyler Melton. Melton into Virginia Tech territory and inside the 40. The two times quarterback Tevin Washington has thrown the football tonight, he's been accurate, particularly throwing the football down the left sideline, Craig. Yeah, but watch what happens, Jesse. The corner comes in. Nobody comes over to take his place. This is absolutely a mess up in the defensive secondary. Blown coverage. It's that safety that needs to get wider to the boundary. Yeah. yeah, one's coming, one's got to get over. Now back to the option, Washington. Well, he might have had the pitch on the corner. Yeah. Roddy Jones was out there, but Kevin kept it. Keep in mind with this triple option offense, not necessarily conducive to playing catch up because they don't throw the football particularly well. But the Yellow Jackets have four runs of over 20 yards today, so they can get chunks. Absolutely. This is an offense, and it can even happen from the fullback right up the middle of the field. They explode with this offense. has it. Allen's had a very good night on the ground. Just down to about the 32. They need to get it to the 28 for the first down. 
This is four down territory for anybody. It certainly is for Paul Johnson. Under five minutes and 30 seconds to go right now. You have to assume uh, they are going for this on fourth down. They may not get the football back, and they don't throw it well, so no question four down territory. Well, they haven't, I'm sorry, Craig. They haven't converted a third down in their last seven tries. It's going to be fourth down as Allen is snowed under. Antoine Hopkins was the first to hit him. You've got a Virginia Tech defense that's stuffed up in the middle of the field expecting Allen to get the ball. You've seen that little fly sweep, that little quick sweep pass out to the side that they do to the slot backs. Be a good time to do it. Paul Johnson bringing in wide receiver Tyler Melton on this play. Of course, that's the guy that had the big reception on this drive. Georgia Tech now 0 for its last eight on third down. They'll need to convert a fourth down now. They're one for two on the night. It's a throwback. Roddy Jones wants to throw it. Roddy cutting it up inside, and he'll be very close to the first down. I think he got it. Wow. Well, first thing I saw on that was Stephen Hill, number five, is back in the game. Remember, he came out and hurt, and they're leading receiver. That's a good thing. How about Paul Johnson, Jesse, dialing up some razzle-dazzle. The baseball player, Roddy Jones, having a chance that I was just going to say, he, he dials it up to a guy that was drafted by the Chicago White Sox out of high school in Roddy Jones. Tech on the move. Washington, explosive runner. Washington inside the 15 and Georgia Tech on the move a great block from Lucas Cox All of a sudden you get a little sustained drive going the defense gets a little tired They get sloppy in their assignments and this Washington gaining confidence Coming in the second half not a lot of experience heading into this football game making a difference now running the football But also with his arm and you see here Antone Exum backup safety down on the ground Exum, who has played a good bit, he had 10 tackles in the victory against East Carolina earlier this year. He's hobbling off the freshman who has a very bright future, Eddie Whitley. We'll check in. Both of those guys play at that free safety position. You know, in watching this drive, you get an appreciation for head coach Paul Johnson's ability to make adjustments on the fly from the sidelines. I played for Steve Spurrier, who had the same ability to do that, see the game as if he was a player. Paul Johnson has that same instinct. Best drive of the half for the Jackets. Washington. Allen has it on the option and it's down to the 10. Well, Paul Allen, I mean, Anthony Paul, Allen. <laughs> Paul Johnson is one of those guys that as he sees the field and sees what's going on, he recognized on that play there that the defense had spread out a little bit. And the, and the gimmick, the trick play, the success of Washington running the play previous to this one just opens up that defense. Kevin Washington. Powered his way forward. It'll bring up another third down. John Graves. Stop. John Graves, the guy, Reese, whose name you've called a couple times tonight. It was in this game last year. He got cut blocked. He, he suffered a, a, an injury that it took him till the bowl game against Tennessee until he was he was right again. He's having a big game tonight, having to stick up, take on these big lines. From this distance on third down, the Jackets have yet to convert tonight. 0 for 6. Third and five. The quick toss. Going into the end zone. Touchdown, Orwin Smith. Well, well, well. What about that drive from the young quarterback? How about the call by Paul Johnson? You know what? That's that play. That's that quick toss where you got the defense set up on the inside and they're worried about Anthony Allen, the B-back Jesse. Everybody gets swallowed up inside in the speed sweep. The greatness of the triple option, you never know whose day it's going to be. In a conventional offense, if you're the third running back, you might get two carries. In this offense, if you're the third running back, A, you're on the field right now. B, depending on the look, you might be getting the rock. Orwin Smith had a big run on the Jackets' first touchdown drive of the night, and he has a huge one to pull Georgia Tech back even at Lane Stadium. Another Thursday night in the ACC, another barn burner coming right down to the end. We're tied at 21.
no offense to find anywhere. The Jackets go 80 yards in nine plays behind the redshirt sophomore backup quarterback Tevin Washington, tied at 21. Now, Paul Johnson is 20 and 0 when leading after three quarters, and he had a 14 7 lead going into the fourth here in Lane Stadium. Jackets last couple years have been strong in close games. He's 11 and 2, just games decided by five points or less. They were 5 and 0 last year, just 1 and 1 this year. Right now, Virginia Tech with 2.34 left, and a senior quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, about to get it back. A short kickoff to David Wilson. Wilson, better be careful. Great speed. Wilson's on his way. Hi. Second kickoff return for a touchdown this year. He's had to fight for time at tailback. He said he wanted to do something every time he touched it so the coaches would have no choice but to get him the rock. And boy, did it come at the right time for the Hokies. 90 yards to the house in Virginia Tech back on top. David Wilson known for doing those backflips. He's probably got Frank Beamer doing a backflip for two right now. His Beamer ball strikes with a non-offensive touchdown. Again, they get in it here. Now, this is a guy who was nicknamed by a school teacher Wiggle Worm because he couldn't sit still in his seat. You can see why. How about that explosiveness there, Jesse, to pick up a team? Well, he's able to find a crease up on the left side here. He catches the rock, starts in the center. And really, there's not that much wiggling. He just had to run in a straight line right by the kicker on his way to the end zone. And you know what I loved? Tyrod Taylor was the first guy in the end zone to go congratulate him. Just the leadership to be out there. He understands how big of a game this is. And you see Paul Johnson. Such a great drive by his offense to go down and tie this thing up late and to have that dagger thrown at you. Everybody who watches this from a coaching staff perspective will tell their kickoff coverage unit fellas All you have to do is look at what happens when you ball up in the middle of the field Against a great return guy powerful guy like David Wilson now. Here's the problem this Virginia Tech defense Just was on the field for a very long drive. It's been one play now. They have to go back out again These guys have to get ready catch their wind get, get some water How about this scene? Does it get any better than Thursday night in Blacksburg? Two twenty-three left. Virginia Tech's going to make sure that BJ Boston doesn't have the opportunity that Wilson had. Saturday night football continues. Nick Foles expected to return for Arizona against Andrew Luck and number 13 Stanford. Missouri and Texas Tech, some of you will see. Game started 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 on the West Coast. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC. Some of the nation will see that Missouri Texas Tech game. You can go to ESPN.com, search maps to find your game. Great quarterback matchup here. And although Nick Foles has impressive numbers, Matt Scott coming in for him has more explosive numbers per pass attempt. Mike Stoops has a big decision to make in this one, doesn't it? Kevin Washington needs to make some good decisions for Georgia Tech. Washington sacked. Bruce Taylor's got him. Ball is on the ground, but I believe they're going to mark it down. Now keep in mind, Georgia Tech has all three of their timeouts as this clock, but they got to have a sense of urgency now. Clock rolling. Going to get lined up in a hurry up mode. Paul Johnson has told friends he's intrigued by the pace at which Oregon runs its offense. He, he could use some tempo, tempo, tempo right now. And the flags fly.
Reese, by my count, that would be the fifth one of those that have been called tonight against Georgia Tech. And what happens, that offensive line, everybody's having to pull and move, and everybody's anticipating the snap, and they're on their horse. Well, they're hearing a different voice with a different cadence. The timing is different. Keep in mind, Georgia Tech does not have a shotgun two-minute offense. They have to run their stuff now, trailing. Washington on second down. Firing into a lot of traffic, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Corey Earls. Now on third and 17, here's what's at stake for Georgia Tech. They are the reigning ACC champions, but at the moment they are two games behind Virginia Tech in the ACC Coastal Division. A loss here, three games out. Hokies only have three to play. Eliminates any realistic chance that Georgia Tech would have to repeat as ACC champion. Bruce Smith would love to get in and rush this passer right now, I'll bet you. Tevin Washington. Drager's after him. Washington's still on his feet, and Tevin's got some running room. Washington headed close. Uh, not sure they're going to quite give him the 30, which is where he needed to get. Stop the clock long enough to move the chains. About the best thing that could have happened for Georgia Tech was for there to be a blessed lane assignment allowing a quarterback to get down the field. It is a first down. Wow. That's Evan Washington here rolling out to his It looked as though Drager was going to be able to pull him down, but there's a lot of shiftiness out of the sophomore quarterback able to get right to the sticks. Washington threw for over 5,000 yards in high school. Needs to move him 70. In waiting seconds now. Skips the pass. Looking for Smith. And I know the clock is such an important part of what's going on here, but with that defense spread out like it is, would not be surprised to see Paul Johnson hand it to the fullback who runs up the middle for 15 yards. You know, it, it, there aren't that many pass concepts in this offense. There might be eight total. And I think Paul Johnson is exhausting all of those different pass plays right now when they need them. In reality, one of these receivers has to make a big play. They got to snag a ball that shouldn't have been caught. Georgia Tech moves again. Phil Smith, left Marvel. tackle. 61 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Craig, I think it's a combination of loud environment and, like I said earlier, different voice. Different cadence, different tempo and rhythm. But if you're Paul, aren't you uh, Paul Johnson? Aren't you just sick to your stomach? Oh. So two of them would go with this quarterback. Four that goes with Joshua Nesbitt. Okay. It's, it's, in, it's unacceptable, right? It's inconsistency, right. and that's the best word to describe Georgia Tech this year. I don't think Washington realized the game clock started running again after the penalty, so we're under a minute. Washington throwing it deep, trying to make a play, and he does. It's caught by Kevin Cohn. Cohn's second catch of the year, and boy, was it a huge one. And now Georgia Tech has an opportunity. 45 seconds to go. They're inside the Virginia Tech 40 after the 38-yard pickup. This is what I was talking about. One of these receivers is going to have to step up. Second reception on the year for the six-foot-two receiver. Make a play for the quarterback. Washington on the roll. He's got a lot of running room. Washington dances out of bounds. He'll stop the clock with 32 to go. What's amazing about that last completion, he threw that on arguably the best cornerback for Virginia Tech, Rock Carmichael. Remember, Rock Carmichael last year had four deep balls thrown on him. Only one was caught by Demarius Thomas for a 51-yard gain. Paul Johnson now calling plays to go back against Rock Carmichael. These cornerbacks now finally, for the first time in the game, have to step up and make plays. Now, Georgia Tech can run the football here if it wants. They have three timeouts, 32 seconds to go. They'll have to be expeditious. Washington's going to throw it. And it's incomplete right through the hands of Corey Earls. And not only that, Reese, but if you do run it, then it does stop while the chains move, right? And so I, I think that would have been a really nice call on second down. Georgia Tech has had its problems on third down tonight, but in short yardage, Jackets have converted both times. And I think if you're Bud Foster, I, I don't think you change anything defensively. You should feel like your cornerbacks and safeties can match up against these receivers. I'd remind my defensive linemen, stay your lanes. Don't let the quarterback scramble, and that hurts you again. Third and two, a quick pitch. Peoples has it. 
He got hit hard, but he'll have the first down. Now there's 20 seconds left. Fox is going to stop long enough to move the change. Craig, you're up here signaling timeout. You want one anyway. Absolutely. Right Call it now. What a finish we've got. The Jackets with Tevin Washington stepping up big time trying to get his team tied. Saturday afternoon, LaMichael James and Oregon host Washington. The Ducks trying to keep their position number one in the BCS standings. Helping Oregon's cause will be the fact that Jake Locker will miss the game with a rib injury. Other games you'll see across the country, Northwestern and Penn State as Joe Paterno goes for victory number 400. Nebraska, Iowa State, North Carolina, Florida State. College football presented by Southwest Airlines, 3.30 Eastern time. You can see it on ABC or ESPN2. All right, here's our situation. 28-21, Virginia Tech trying to hold its lead against Georgia Tech. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jim Brown down on the sidelines. Another barn burner in the ACC. What does Georgia Tech do right now? Well, you, you lose the ability to have a, a, a trick play because if you're throwing the football, Virginia Tech all week said, hey, a, a pass is a trick play from Georgia Tech. I think the good news is you are on the 25-yard line, so you can start taking shots into the end zone if you want. I like getting Tevin Washington outside the pocket and remind him, hey, run pass option. Guys aren't open downfield. You're an athlete. Go get the first. 26 yards away from the tying score. 20 seconds and two timeouts. Option. Washington got room. Washington inside the 20. They'll need to use the timeout right now. And Johnson's right on top of it. He's still running. I think they're going to reset this clock. I think Johnson got this called a little bit earlier than the nine seconds. Home clock. <laughs> Run it down to nine. <laughs> or, I, I, or two. I, will, I will say this. What an incredible charge job. Timeout, Georgia Tech. That's their second charge timeout. Please reset the game clock to 14 seconds. One, four. What a great job of perseverance and hanging in there by Georgia Tech. Because, you, you know, Reese, you just said a few moments ago, before that previous drive, what, they had two yards in this quarter? Mm -hmm. Right. And they went down, the, the, yeah. it, it went, went down the field. I mean, this quarterback has come in and done the very best he can, and the defense, I mean, that's a just great composure. To lose your senior leader in Joshua Nesbitt, the ACC's all-time leading rusher at the quarterback position in the second quarter. Have Tevin Washington come in in this environment, get, they've got a chance. Without, a, without his best wide receiver, Stephen Hill, on the field. Remember, they lost him when Tevin Washington entered the game. Okay, now it's getting dicey on the run pass. See what Johnson chooses to do. Tevin's going to throw it. Got a man in the end zone throwing. Is it intercepted? It is. Rock Carmichael with the pick in the end zone. To get into position, Tyler Melton beat Rock Carmichael on a big play. You know what? Carmichael makes the biggest one in the end zone. Rock Carmichael was beat, but the guy runs a 4.2640, the fifth fastest in the history of the program here. He makes up and gets back into it and knows right where the football is going to be. Speed made up for the mistake. You know, it was amazing. Tyler Melton during that last time out was pleading with head coach Paul Johnson on the sideline. I think he thought he could beat him on that corner route, but the senior leader, Rock Carmichael, able to make a game saving play. The second interception in the end zone tonight for the Hokies, and it will save their perfect ACC record and eliminate Georgia Tech's hopes of repeating as ACC champions. 28-21, David Wilson's kickoff return ends up being the game winner. Now Wrangler five-star player of the game is the explosive Mr. Wilson. David Wilson, his second kickoff return for a touchdown on the season. This one coming right after Georgia Tech had tied the game at 21. It turned out to be the game winner. Wilson was responsible for some fireworks. And the interception by Carmichael was the one that finally lit the fuse, and Wilson was spectacular. You know what? This was a football team that knew they had to play 60 minutes. They failed against Boise State and only played 57 minutes. It was on their mind. Wilson then with a big explosive kickoff return for the game winner. Very impressed with the character of this football team. And you'll see the athleticism here of David Wilson after the speed, the jump into the end zone and the celebration. And then, I mean, th that's like, that was automatic. 
does not look like us on those uh, those bungee cords. <laughs> for sure. A 28 21 win for the Hokies. Frank Beamer delighted. I'm sure he's with Jen Brown. Coach they drive the length of the field and they take a shot at the end zone there. What's going through your mind. Oh you know you uh, you think when you get a team like that down the score and they got to throw the ball you got them but give them credit they did a nice job and made a nice throw made a couple nice catches and uh, give Georgia Tech credit they hung in there. You take the lead 21 14 they come back. What is so tough about stopping that triple option offense. Well again you know you what you strive for is to get up on them and get them throwing and uh, you know they, they did a nice job completing a couple of passes when we when they needed to throw. David Wilson is known for making some extraordinary plays with his legs. What were you thinking about that kickoff return game winning kickoff return. Yeah. He's been directly involved with two at NC State he took the second half kickoff back and this one and uh, you know he's uh, two big plays for our season right here. Seven straight wins you're now five and zero oh in the ACC. What does this say about the character of your team starting off the season 0 oh and 2. Well I said all along we got some great kids. Our coaches have hung in there. Our players have hung in there and got a lot of work to do though. It's uh, it's week to week in this uh, this league right here. All right. Thanks coach Reese. Thank Jen Frank Beamer's 10th on the all time wins list and with this thrilling victory now just two behind the legendary Woody Hayes. What a program he is built here at Virginia Tech. Here is the game saving interception by Rock Carmichael. Well I tell you what if the ball is just a little deeper into the back part of it they got a chance but still Tevin Washington he did an outstanding job of coming into the game overwhelmed playing against a very good team. And Jesse you know how hard that is as a quarterback and he did I thought an outstanding job no question about it but what can you say again about the character of this Virginia Tech team after those two devastating losses in one week at the start of the season they've now been able to bounce back they've got these tough earned wins big one here tonight seventh in a row and now this football team in line and it's still possible they get their seventh straight ten win season. That would be the longest active streak. Texas streak is going to go by the boards this year, almost certainly. And Virginia Tech undefeated in ACC play. A two game lead on the field in the ACC Coastal, a three game lead on Virginia Tech after the 28 21 victory over the Yellow Jackets tonight. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown, and our entire fine Thursday night crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night from Blacksburg. Hokey, hokey high. Went to by seven. <laughs>